Hello and welcome to My Guy Reviews. Um, I'm My Guy Monkey and I have my special guest today is... My Guy Brig, I made it! Yeah, well, I'm on the uh... show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so... Yeah, at last, for the first time. I know, we've, we've, just, we've been <laughs> trying to put this thing together for so long. And finally, <laughs> so long. I think this is episode like 10 or something. And yeah. I made it. And finally, you're a guest. I know. Before you, before you were just a co-host, but now you've been, <laughs> now I've, I've been promoted. You've been promoted to special guest. Oh, um, brilliant! Yeah, we uh, here. We uh, usually every week we talk about a topic. One comes in blind, uh, the other knows what they're talking about. Um, yes. Uh, but this week we've got a topic that we both agreed on. This is, but it's your idea, really. Uh, you I... wanted to talk about. Love, death, and robots. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, what is this? <laughs> you, what is you, this made, thing? you made me watch 18 episodes <laughs> and you don't even know what it is. I haven't <laughs> even seen one. Really? I don't even, I don't even know the titles. I was, I was relying on you. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so this, this is a... Do, do you want to give a background of what the show is? Yeah, so, we'll, you, we so usually we'll uh, be... Yeah, we'll talk about a topic to do with media, such as uh, movies, um, maybe one day video games uh, or books. Um, the topic will cover a few different films that are maybe about across an actor's work or a director, and we just chat about it. One usually comes in blind, as we said, um, and the other brings the topic to the table. Uh, after that, we give a few mini reviews of what we've been doing or watching or playing. And then also a segment of what's upcoming and what we're looking forward to. Um, so, yeah, uh, our, our topic for today, uh, Love, Death and Robots, a series on Netflix, uh, made for Netflix, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think the format is going to go that you're going to tell me the title, probably. You're going to ask me what <laughs> I'm going to ask the title. Out. Okay. Yes. Okay. That, if that it's helps. It's quite quite normal. Uh, that's that's how it normally goes. And then I struggle to find and remember what it is yes. what it's about. Um, and I think you wanted me to grade. You wanted me to give it a pass or fail. A, uh, yeah. Fresh... I thought let's because because what what I find thing is when whenever we start to review <laughs> and we talk about something, you sit on the fence too much. So I just saw. Let's go for. Um, let's oh. take Rotten Tomatoes. Right. We'll just call it fresh or rotten. Mm. Either you liked it or loved it or simply hated it. So that's that's the two things I'm trying to get to. Yeah. I thought it was fresh. Um, oh. <laughs> the whole lot. Spoiler alert. <laughs> we okay. got, we could, we're um, done. <laughs> we're done. We're out. No, <laughs> well, okay. no, 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 done. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, do, do you want to say what the series is about or anything or just get straight into it? Uh, well, I don't. I, I haven't heard anything except what I've actually seen. Um, it seems to be... The premise seems to be different people, different uh, animated animate, animation makers have uh, been brought together to make an episode each. For There's 18 episodes. Um, they, yep. they vary in length. They can be maybe five minutes to 15 minutes, something like that. Um, they all they can have any animation style that they choose. And yeah. they're aimed at adults. So yes, they it's, are. It's, very, it's very clear that they've got that that in part of their um, part of their instruction is that it's an adult animation because they try to get some nudity and swearing in or nudity and rudeness or some such into every episode it seems. And there's some there's a there's a lot of violence as well, um, graphic yeah. violence in this. Yeah, um, violence as well. But you get that in uh, all anime certain certain degrees yeah. of anime. But yeah, there is some extreme violence in some of them. And I'd, and I'd, and I'd say this is kind of, this is an anthology, so okay. each episode is its own episode. Yeah, um, I've been yeah. looking online to Not see if I anyone think. or any of the producers or directors are talking about any kind of through line or any connection between these yeah. yet. Um, mm -hmm. And so far, they've not confirmed nor denied that there is. But what would I've be interesting is it. if you can remember what your first episode is, because um, I was reading a lot about Netflix saying the ordering varies depending on whose profile it sits behind. Does it? So That's... some people will get to see a particular episode as number one, while someone else would ah. see a different episode as number one. <clears throat> so I was weird. wondering if you could remember what the first episode was. Because then well, I, I I know which one I watch first. 
Okay, well, my one was the the one where the three robots are on vacation, and I uh, assumed okay. that was yep. the first one because I've I've only I've only I've only graded them in order. I've not Perfect. even got the titles. So. No, no, that's that's fine. Then that's the first one I saw. So some, okay, someone good. was talking about um, uh, their ordering being different. So yeah, so mm-hmm. okay. So we'll we'll talk about them based on the the audit or whatever you've written down we'll go through each one yeah. uh, quick quick note um the producers and the kind of like the people behind it someone called tim miller he did the very first deadpool film oh, the, right. the, yeah. the really small budget one um and then david fincher the guy who directed stuff like fight club gone yeah. girl um seven oh, so okay. you know so, yeah. so, 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 some incredible kind of like creative heads are sitting on top of this and then wow. like like you said it's pretty much just Look, go away, make your own thing. A director, um, use whichever mm. animation style or studio you want, almost, and let's make small episodes of this show. There's only two actors, real life characters, or you know, people who appear in this. Everyone else is animated of some sort or CGI. Oh yeah, yeah, them. true. Yeah, <clears throat> that's just um, one episode it, where they had some live action. Yeah, but the re- and that, that that was directed by Tim Miller as well. Okay. Okay, so should we t- start with the first one? Three yeah, robots. Let's, let's just go through them. What, what, what are we saying? <laughs> which, which way Three do you robots. want to do it? Because should, should we should we talk uh, a little bit about it and then give our rating? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so, so what? It, who wants to go and explain that. what the, want, the synopsis you is? In each one? You, the, you want me to ask you the question? Should we take it in turns? I'll ask you the yeah. question. This time. Okay. You what was it all time. about? Okay, so it seems I like these. I don't know the tune. I don't, <clears throat> don't know your theme. What <laughs> yeah, you don't know the theme. About? It's not. It's I not what it's all about. <laughs> That's quite good. Uh, three robots. Okay, okay so um, they they come down to um, I'm guessing planet Earth because they talk about humanity a lot in this. Um, one's called Xbot. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Th- that's a joke later on, and they come to kind of see how how humans used to live, and it's almost like um. It's like going on holiday, so they've come to yeah. our planet on holiday, and they're just looking at things, and they see a basketball. Um, mm. They they watch a cat. They look at a cat, and they talk about a cat, and they talk about all sorts of different things that <laughs> happen. Sounds so interesting. <clears throat> and yeah, because they're so fascinated. They're taking little <laughs> yeah. pictures, and they're talking about kind of like how humanity yeah. um, has changed and how we are very primitive and stuff like that. Yeah, and, it's like um, that on holiday in Fallout because it's like the end of the world. It's yeah, like it, everything it's, is destroyed. Humanity is gone. There's skeletons no, everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So there's literally no humanity left at all, and they're just kind of wandering around the streets and they're looking at uh, broken down buildings and they see things. And I think he talked about that. There's a bit where they're in a diner and there's like mm. um, a burger there. But it's like a the pulp bones... fiction scene. They're talking yeah. about a burger, and he's sitting back, relaxed, like Samuel L. Jackson. Because all the bones and stuff are there as well, it's quite fascinating to see yeah. what what may have killed them. So none of that's really explained. It's just kind of these robots have come down. There's no explanation mm. as to where they came from or how things kind of fit in. But I, I, I it's really funny as well. I thought. Yeah, this, they're this they're talking was... they're talking and it's very humorous. Yeah. Yeah. All, all, all they talk about is kind of taking the Mickey out of humanity a lot of it. Yeah. How, how kind of great primitive. start to the series? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's it's a it's very perfect. and. It, and it's very different this episode to every other episode, I think. Because mm. I think I saw this one and I was like, oh, this is really good. I think this is really funny. This is uh, very different. And then each episode kind of changes on that. So this is just yeah. following these three robots. Then you see the cats and then you understand why humanity is no longer around because <laughs> they kind of drip feed you stuff and the little twist at the end. Um, yeah. I love this episode. Wait, this was really, really good. Um, yeah, I, I did too. Yeah. Um... Like, like, yeah, like we say, it's funny, and uh, it's a re- yeah, it is a really good introduction to like what it's all, all going to be about because you know it's about love, death, and robots. You have got robots just walking around, discussing things, um, the, the death of humanity. I mean that that's what I, I thought the whole series was going to be about, but then obviously we see that every every episode is different, very different, yeah, very <clears throat> different, yeah. There's no real tie in at all no I, I love the fact that the the cats demanded to be petted or they'll yes. explode or something which is really yes. funny as well 
Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's I think it's very clever. I think there's another one later on as well that has something like that as well. But yeah, this was really good for me. Um, it's a, it's again. So this is kind of like what you when you understand how short the episode is. Only like ten or twelve minutes. It wasn't that long, was it? It's quite right. snappy. It's it's visually amazing, and yeah, it's funny. Very for yeah. compared to some of the other stuff, it's actually a brighter look on mm. things than some of the other ones. Yeah, it's it's smart as well. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Would you give it a rating? Yeah, we've oh, got eight uh, to get through, so we don't need to hang around on each one. Too long. Fresh. Fresh, yeah, definitely fresh for me. Um, I've been I I I went and rated them when I went to rewatch them based on whether I w- could be bothered to rewatch them. Yes. <laughs> and this was definitely a rewatch. Oh, Seventy-five percent so. fresh for me. Oh, awesome. Yes. Um So how how do we want to go through these? Should we just Shall I just give you the name of a title episode and you tell me what it is? Or have um, you got it written uh, down or something? Hopefully it'll be the same order. So if oh, you give me the okay. name, hopefully it'll be the same and I'll, I'll be able to explain it. Okay. Um, I think the next one came on was Sonia's Edge. Sonia's Edge. No, that's not for me. That's a different okay. Um, <clears throat> you might have seen... Um, have was, was this the one where uh, Beyond... And uh, well, we'll do Sonia's Edge because that's this Sonia's Edge, yeah. <clears throat> okay, and so I'll tell do you, you what about. so what's the story, my guy, monkey? Right. I would like As to I know. I don't know any of the titles, but <laughs> okay. I, I think I know which one you're talking about. Um, okay, brilliant. So I'll check with you. Uh, this is about a team that used fighting robots, yeah, that's the one, yeah, yeah, yes, that's it, yes, yes. yes so, um, there's a well, it's a it's based. It's based. Focuses on one team, um, and the there's a there's a sinister guy who wants the them to throw the fight, um, yep. but they refuse, and then yep, they go into battle. So yep. they refuse to take a take a dive, and they go into battle. So then we get to see how the um, how this these battles work out, and basically people tap in mentally. Like through a connection into a creature monster, yeah, and they're put and they're pitted in a in a uh, arena, and it's to the death to kill each other. Um, yes, and this is a uh, three full on three D animation that's quite good. Um, and well, the battle is intense. Uh, the battle is, like, isn't it? It looks amazing. Yeah, it was a good battle. <laughs> I have to say, I wasn't interested personally in rewatching it the second time, which which downgrades it a bit. But it was a good battle. Yeah. yeah. If you take that standalone fight by itself, that's just, that's really good. It's well choreographed. <laughs> yeah. It actually looks good. Um, and the two characters who are fighting each other, it feels like there's a bit of weight to them as well. Like when they hit each other. Yeah, like sometimes you can watch something CGI, but it does it doesn't hit. Yeah, but when they hit each yeah. other, and <clears throat> especially when it takes the little the the arm off, I think the arm did, but not the head. Yeah, <clears throat> and then he's got his extra weapon underneath the arm yeah. and all that stuff. So yeah, that was wicked. Um, yeah, and it looks like our our protagonist is under threat in the, uh, but but um, just at the last minute she uh, manages to to uh, enact her revenge and come back from the brink of death yeah. and dis- absolutely destroy her p- opponent, from what I remember. Yes, yeah, she um, just eats... Um, um, I think she bites straight down his chest and into his heart yeah. or something, and then she just rips him apart, rips the head yeah. off as well. Um, but then after that, we've got a... Um, Go back a, to the main story. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to the actual <clears throat> story. So part of this story is also that the, the girl who's controlling this creature has been a victim of sexual assault in her past. Um, yeah. And that that's why it's called Sonia's edge. Cause it's kind of like, what is her edge? Why is she so good at fighting? And what happens after the battle is that a, uh, a, a girl from the other team or the, uh, at least the bad guy from the beginnings team anyway, comes yes. to question Sonia as to what her edge is and to find out what what gives her that killer instinct to win the battles um and yeah by the end of well there's there's uh slight lesbian sexual scenes as well there yeah um, 
um, some sort of chemistry between the two of them. But uh, spoilers coming up. <laughs> oh, the whole episode, thing's a spoil. It's yeah. got to be spoilers. Um, yeah, she turns out she's not. She's uh, still a bad guy, and they find out why she really does have the edge and why by they they do that by um killing her and crushing her head so much yeah so that you severe. would not think she would be able to talk still but she can and that's when they find out what sonia's edge really is do you, and do you want to explain the edge no <laughs> no. <laughs> no no she's she's some sort of bioware or she's in the machines she was talking through um, <laughs> i guess she's is she an AI thing? Sentinel. Well, the, um, the thing is that when she was when she was uh, assaulted in her past, they saved her body, but they couldn't save her brain. So they transferred her brain, I think, into the creature. Okay. So, so the creature that she's fighting as is actually her, and the person, the body that that everyone thinks is controlling it is actually is the, the other way around. So. The, actually, the, the creature, creature is cr- the creature controlling, is yeah. controlling <laughs> the person. So the person uh, is the avatar, and Christ. and her brain is in the creature, which means that every time she's fighting in the arena, she's fighting for her life. Um, and that was quite a good twist. I thought. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good because they didn't show much of the world. They just they took a snippet of this. Let's let's do this like thing yeah. that leads up to let's a fight. Contain. Do yeah. the fight. And then yeah. end, and it's and it is a complete story, but it doesn't give you context of where they are as a whole. Are they floating in space? Has yeah. uh, England and the whole rest of the world moved on or anything? I yeah. and I really like that. Just keep it quite simple. True. Again, and not you, that long an episode. If you think of it in that term, you don't know what's outside. You could connect them into the other <coughs> other episodes, but probably not. <laughs> I guess it'd have to be pre three robots. Uh, I think yeah, three robots so. would almost have to be towards the end of the Absolutely. if you if you're building a timeline because they come to visit planet Earth when it's in, inhabited. So there's no one yeah. around, True. so some of this stuff would have had to have happened beforehand. Mm. If if it's current, yeah. So where I, where are you saying with your um, review? Fresh well, or rotten? Um, let me find it on my list because I've got to look find the numbers. Because this is um, one where it's almost like it should sit in the middle, but it. Well, we're not having that anymore. Um, yeah, well, what would you give it while I look this up? Um, oh, you know what? It's so tough because the, the middle bit is really, really good. The fight between the two monsters, the first time I watched it, like, it, was, like, yeah. it was, yeah, especially it's because I almost felt for her, her monster more than the other monster. Um, and especially when he cuts off her kind of like the, the taily things and the sword comes out, all that was good. And then the kind of the twist at the end but the start mm. was quite boring i wasn't really into it until the fight happened i think yeah but because i've only got two options uh, um I, yeah. i'm gonna give this one a it's not as good as three robots though yeah. does he have rewatchability as well it's one of those exactly exactly <sighs> just what are you gonna the, give it the middle fight is good though um, it is it is uh i'll you, give this you, a fresh yeah. you know what fresh yeah yes, good fresh. I'm, I'm glad you gave it a fresh because I gave it a rotten. <laughs> <laughs> you intentionally pushed me in that direction. Uh, well, no, because I when I rewatched it, I literally just skipped to the girl scene because I wanted to watch that conversation again. Yeah. Um, so that bit was rewatchable, but I thought the whole I I, I don't like them bringing up uh, sort of rape as a, just using that as a, kind of a very standard. Um, girl background it's they kind of misuse that a lot in in media so yeah that that put me off a bit but it was good for the twist um but they could have just said assault rather than having to go for that but it's it's just the fact that they misused that a bit but i think yeah when i watched it the first time i have to say that fight was really good but mm. for me action isn't isn't i'm, <sighs> I'm all just in the conversation okay. so but that's that's why you like fast and furious one and not any of the other ones yeah exactly because <laughs> that's the one with the least amount of action and that's yeah. your favourite film I don't even sense. like that film I hate that franchise <laughs> <laughs> okay so what, what's next on the list and it's your turn to pick one uh, do I, I get to pick one for you okay. yeah if you've got the title it would help cause I've, I don't I've, have I've only titles. got the title you give me the title then and I'll, tell, and I'll ask you <laughs> what's <Yeah>. one <laughs> 
Okay, so The Witness. The Witness. Oh, gosh. I have to figure out which one this is then. Okay, you tell me what it's about. and then I'll Okay, know. so this, this one is a, a different animation yes. style. Oh, again, I know which um, one it is. I know. And it's the one where the woman wakes up and she looks like out the... of her window and she yes. sees a guy or what seems to be this guy's killing someone who looks just like her. And then the whole story is about her trying mm. to run away from him. Yeah. And I don't and think she sees that, he, that uh, the girl looks like her, but he does. Or does so she wake up? I think and... she wakes up. She sees him. I think you all know the rest, but like, I think he sees the face of the girl that he's just killed when he sees her what, seeing her. And, and, that, and he's like, they look just I the same. She, I and thought she recognised the, the, the person he's killing. That's why, as herself. Okay. Because that's that. why she would run. Uh, because seemed, why else? It seemed like, he, like her face was like behind the wall. She was down on the ground. I think the, she uh, ducked victim. down. Oh, no, I see no, the victim oh, okay. down on the ground. So she just witnessed a murder, from what I could tell. I, okay. And then she's running. I because thought, yeah, he's, and he's running after her. She's like, yeah, yeah. He's running after me. He's a murderer. He's going to murder me. Exactly. But yeah, I, carry on. I, I kind of thought she's she's in her room or part where she wakes up. Mm. She sees herself through the window yeah. and she's sees the guy killing her, but yeah. not the whole thing. Okay. But anyway, so that's um, two ways to see it already. So that's and this is this is the whole point of this episode. Yeah, so exactly. good. Um, so she sees the murder or crime or doesn't see it and then she's chased by or what she thinks is being chased by this guy and then she goes through what is her daily job of, in the brothel and all of that and then it comes back to the end of the day where spoiler the roles have been reversed and she's killing him mm. at the end and mm. he now witnesses himself being killed by her uh yeah exactly so so just to uh, make that very clear like so basically, they've completely swapped places. Now there's the guy who's in the apartment witnessing a murder. And the person that's killed someone is the girl that was trying to get away in the first place. Yes. And she's just shot the guy because he, he, she thought he was chasing, chasing her to kill her. Yes. But, and now she's looking at him and she's become the killer he's become she's the victim a, she's about to run after him and and you find out basically he wasn't trying to kill her in the first place he just wanted to tell her that something weird happened yes <laughs> and <laughs> it's and like, it's just created this amazing time loop a loop I, yeah I, I love the idea where uh, it's it's almost like it's groundhog day but the opposite so yeah. what you saw the first time to what you see the next day it's almost like the second half of the day or the, se- mm. the second part. And, and then I'm guessing these two will continuously loop yeah. every day until something happens that breaks them out of the loop. But I, I, I think it's such a clever idea. And that's one mm. of the reasons why this anthology works so well. Like the first three robots, you've got the other one. But now you've got a completely different animation style as well. Yeah. And, and it's a completely different story. And it could be, again, it could be anywhere, any time yeah. zone. It doesn't really matter. But the main story is following mm. these two people. It seems and like it's seeing, a- very modern earth though because it's just huge yeah. towers everywhere and it's all neon stuff going on and yeah so not, not so distant future maybe yeah but yeah um yeah exactly what you said about it i i love I, you know what this is fresh this was so good i like it yeah of course it, it's fresh, it made yeah. me made me think about kind of like that loop thing at the start and then watching the end thinking okay so she's going to stop him but he mm. realised initially that she's going to be the one who's going to be killing him by accident with the, the same way he killed her, literally, at the start of the episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the way that she, you see her after she's killed him is the exact same expression, yeah, exactly. exactly movement. So it's like they are the same person. And the only question I have is, if he's now going to run off, is yep. he also a stripper in a sex club? Is it going to be exactly <laughs> the same? That's, that's one question. Maybe he's a tax accountant and he, and he works in accountancy yeah, firm. Yeah, that's the thing. Either there's going to be a duality where they both have the same two different lives that they keep on flipping back and forth, or maybe they are exactly the same job. Um, so, yeah, that is a question. And I gave this a fresh as well. Um, for re rewatchability, yes. um, I loved what... I, when I watched it a second time, I loved watching it a second time because you, you can see 
it's strange because when you first the first time you watch it, the guy running after her, he seems kind of clumsy and like pathetic in it, like like he's not really. Um, I don't know. He doesn't seem like a killer, but you know he's a killer. Yeah, because yeah, um, we've just so seen him. He, so that's in your mind, but he's kind of just gangly and like, like um, gorm- gormless in some way. And when you rewatch it, you see that he's actually just running after trying to tell her this thing, and you can see all those characteristics from the other angle. So it's great to rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah, uh, love love the themes and that as well in this, and the animation looked lovely, like it was like anime but three D. So yeah, yeah that's that's and it's good because the styles have been so unique. different in the in 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 the first three, and mm. they're all self contained. And this story is really clever idea of kind of like being in role reversal. I loved it. So I gave this a ninety percent. Wow, you you even give it a percentage? I just said give <laughs> the wording. Well, I, I, okay. I, I, I try. <laughs> so I, I, I did witness. Um, so the next one is for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you the title. Guess, yes, I'll try and guess okay. what it is. Okay. So the next one is Sucker of Souls. My Guy Monkey, what's the story? Um, Sucker of Souls. Oh, no. Start me off. The Vampire. Oh, okay, yeah. Sucker of Souls. I know the one you're talking about. This is like a 2D animation. So this Normal one kind of is... Has- anime style like it's got an anime edge to it a feel to it um, and yeah this one okay so it starts off there's two guys as a, a sci- scientist we find out he's a scientist there's an action sort of uh, soldier sort of guy running um, along an underground tomb sort of a crypt sort of place um, being chased and they're about to get killed I guess the the lights yeah, in, yeah. in the lights in the passage are slowly going out for, as something is chasing them until the point that all the lights go out and I guess they're dead but then it looks like it's supposed to be a flashback but this is something that confuses me with this one because the then we get them coming through the dark, out of the darkness in from a passage into a room um but it looks like it's a flashback now because um there's more people there now yeah so i'm guessing the others of you know these those two were the survivors before and now we're seeing it earlier and they're decrypting uh, some text the the scientist and his helper and the soldier guy there is communicating with his own team of a couple more soldiers who are in a different room. Um, and the, uh, they then, while they're reading out the, uh, the description or whatever it is, the text, the ancient text, they seem to awaken Dracula. So that's yes. Uh, yeah. And they run away. <laughs> the, the, one of the boys gets killed straight away. The help of yep. science. They run away. Um, but spoiler, they find out the cats, uh, cats are a good defense. Yeah. So th- this could help for, uh, three robots because uh, cats yes. actually kept Dracula at bay in this episode. Yeah. So the, the cats are quite helpful. Yeah. Um, that's a funny thing that comes up that, yeah, cats, as well as nudity, cats seem to come up quite a bit in the series of things as well. So, um, yeah, it's quite. I quite like the bit where he just holds the cat up in front of him, at Dracula, and Dracula's like, "I can't go near you now." Yeah, it, it poisons them, uh, poisons and burns Dracula's. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the rest of it is them meeting up with the team, them trying to battle. The thing, yeah, they're trying to blow up and battle the thing. Um, then they try to escape. They end up surrounded by, like, a hundred Draculas or something. Yeah. And that's the end and they're killed. And that's the point at which I get confused because was that bit at the beginning something in the future or not? Because these are two complete... They, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up to the same story for me. Do you know what I, I mean? I, I never saw it the way you saw it. Now, now that you explained it, maybe it does. But I guess at the end yeah. of the, the episode, um, they, they like may die. Dead. But yeah. then because they're holding the cat, 
Okay. Would that would that would they mean one would survive or two would survive depending on how they run out of there? Yeah, I, I don't know. So, they, suppose they. Yeah, you're right. I suppose they could survive that scene, run out, and then that beginning scene is actually them running from all of those loads of Draculas. Yeah. So that's the way it must have been. Okay. Because because it's left quite ambiguous as to what happens, and because they've still got yeah. a cat with them, I don't know if that meant the ones without the cat or near the cat aren't yeah. protected and will just automatically be yeah. beaten and then the other guys maybe are protected because the cat i don't know how it affects them like you know fur balls or scratch or whatever but if yeah. they keep in their distance they might be okay to run away just far away enough and to have mm. that kind of loop yeah um, and i don't, don't think they had the cat with them in the first scene either so yeah so maybe so she ran that, away i guess that's when they're doomed or um, maybe they ran through and then they threw the cat out and then that's why they got to the end. Yeah. To keep the vampires, at, uh, the Draculas at bay. But, they, they, um, they left the cat to kill. Or yeah. the cat could be killing the Draculas for we know. Yeah. And or, so they left or, the cat there and they ran. Or here's a twist. Maybe they killed all the... Maybe the cats killed all the vampires already and the beginning scene is them running away from the cats. Who are out to kill humanity now. Yes, just like but in Captain Marvel. In... What? <laughs> Captain, Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel. Remember the cats? Oh, yes, the cats. Yes, I know what you mean. Uh, she she eats the Tesseract and she takes out Nick Fury's eye. Yeah. So goose. It could be just like Goose. Could be tying into that. I was thinking more into the robot episode at the it's beginning. It's all be part of the MCU. It's all part of the MCU. That's the reveal. <laughs> we brought it back. <laughs> At last, it's discovered. It was all a teaser for the, for the next phase. All these characters are going to be in phase four. Well, they are introducing Blade. True. So, yeah, this could be Blade. Yeah. The prequels. Oh, prequels are it interlude. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, that, none of that's kind of... And I, and I like the fact, because it's such a short little episode. Again, mm-hmm. they don't have to explain where they are, what they're doing. They're just mm-hmm. out and they're, you know, archaeologists or they're just discoverers looking for treasure, nothing. Um, we have no idea what's happening in the real world outside of them. And they're just in this little caves or cave system. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good little episode. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as some of the others. Okay. So what, what, I couldn't what rewatch this. This, this. this I can't watch rewatch. I'd give okay. this, um, this is rotten for me. Rotten, okay. Yeah. That's good. Well, I've only got two choices. <laughs> I gave a fresh. Surprisingly, you're, I mean, because you're a sucker. Contrarist. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I like the anime style. Um, some of the uh, violence is quite funny, and actually, the like the the way they quip about and stuff in the thing makes it quite a funny episode. Mm. I think that's, and therefore, I wanted to rewatch it to see all of that. Um, it, that kept me engaged, um, so I give it a fresh seventy percent. Okay, no, not for me. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so should I give you the next name? Give me a, then, Give me a name. And, then, and this is the one I need to explain. Yes. Go on, okay. So <clears throat> the next name is Suits. Suits. Okay. What's it about? My guy. Okay. Okay, so this is about, uh, about my guy Brig. I like it. I like it too. Um, it's I about it s- small community of farmers. Okay. Oh and yeah. Another one. And they have to defend themselves from What's it called, um, suits. Okay. Because it's they're called... wearing mech suits. Yes, because they're wearing mech suits. Spoilers. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's an invading kind of like uh, insect. I, I I can't really describe it, but they're like insects coming yeah. through. It seems like there's some sort of force field or something, and they're able. There after a while, they crawl through. Um, and then one night, because this is just set over kind of like a few hours, one mm. night, um, a large swarm of them start coming through. And so he calls for the defense with other people. So other people in the mech suits come along, and there's mm. three of them fighting swarms of um, these little bug things. It looks, it looks, all of this looks great, by the way. Like it's kind the of whole kind childish of animation. It's not like the realistic animation. It's in between. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit like um, Fortnite or... Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say more like Fortnite. That sort of kind yeah. of animation and look and feel. Uh, and, and then, you know, they're kind of shooting away. And then he, I think he puts a big grenade in the big thing. 
Well, no, she shoots the big bazookery thing into the mouth of the big, big insectoid, and it dies. And then they firm up the defenses at the end, and they're just kicking about. Someone and then, then himself. yeah, and then they kind of like um, show. So as the camera kind of moves back, we mm. get to see the whole population that we're currently, or this this planet, is just literally being invaded constantly. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like the, the, the defenses, when it does penetrate, there's going to be more of these things. But there's yeah. just, it's a swarm of these things just waiting outside. Well, I, yeah, I like it. You got that kind of feeling from the beginning, I thought. That yeah. They were sort they, of like, this is an everyday occurrence. Like, yeah. we, have to, we have to deal with holes in the barrier from these insects. And yeah, that reveal at the end is kind of like, oh, look, they're in a force field on the, this alien sort of planet or whatever it is. And that, is, that was all kind of like, well, we kind of knew that already, I felt. Um, like the twist on this day was that for some reason, lots of holes were appearing. So yeah. that was more like why that's more what we really wanted to know was maybe who's caused this. I think there was some I, I can't remember, but I think there was a clue early on as to that maybe someone's causing some problems for for them creating this hole. Oh, actually, I think it. No, the thing is, the uh, it's the scarecrow, because the scarecrow at the beginning, the bad, bad gift, which is kind of like this weird scarecrow. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking, oh look, this scarecrow, it, it looks like someone's given you a gift that's purposely causing these holes. But then they use the scarecrow at the end to help save the day, so I guess that isn't the case. Yeah. Um. So that part, keeping you guessing, was quite good for for me. Um. This one's a. Uh, this one's a rotten. What's all about you? I really like this one. Um, <laughs> I could rewatch this. I know you, you know what this comes down to. It comes Action. to substance over story, and for me, they had a lot of substance, a lot, lot of action, a lot of, kind of like... substance compared to story. Substance for me is story. <laughs> <laughs> you style mean action over, style or story. over style over substance. Exactly. Then, sure. I just I could see you liking this. <laughs> I like it. I gave it a fail on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it, it felt like a video game it felt like this is like the first um or second stage of a game um yeah. and you know the, the characters go out there you know you you you, you gotta hold that line defend it yeah. and then you'll go away you do your repairing stuff in the morning and yeah. then you find out the next level or level three or four whatever it is there's a larger swarm because yeah. in the first one you get a mini boss come through and yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know what? It felt like a video game. I yeah. loved it. I, I know. I, what yeah. I mean, well, the first time I watched it, because I watched all of them the first time around. Um, yeah, they all, uh, or a lot of them do feel like, or maybe half of them feel like a video game that you're not having to play. And in that respect, I quite like that because, like, I don't, I don't like uh, action shooters like that much. So just watching a show like that is a yeah. bit, it's a bit nice actually. Um, so yeah, in that respect, it, it is good the episode for that stuff. But Fresh. for going for going back, <laughs> for going back, I didn't. I didn't really. You watch definitely it. watch it a second time. Yeah. I didn't want to. Watch, I didn't rewatch it. I didn't want that, to. And you know what? I great. percentages to to almost <laughs> all of these, and I just did a line for this one. I'm not. I didn't give it a percent. It's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say. You know what? I loved it. Nothing. It's, it's, it's the same. It's it's the thing with the, the Fast and Furious films, right? You like the one where nothing happens and they're driving the straight line and steal DVDs. I like the one where they start driving and they take left and rights. Actually, so... you know what? No, actually, it was a different one that I gave a line through. This one got 35%, so we're fine. Yeah. It's, still, it's still rotten. <laughs> it's still okay. Rotten. So... My order of things is still difficult to go through. It's all good. Anyway, that was an awesome episode. Okay, so I explained <laughs> that one. <laughs> okay, which um, one am I explaining? Good. Okay, so, so the next one... I want you to explain is the the one called Beyond the Aquila Rift. I think it's called. Beyond the Aquila Rift. Beyond, yeah. Um, beyond the yes. Aquila Rift. Um, this is this the one where they're going into stasis? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, it is. Okay, because this is I think this is the second episode on my list when when I watched it. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah, here's second on mine as well. <laughs> You're just throwing it, throwing it out of order. Well, it's I'm, it's I'm reading this off. I'm reading this off off of order. Oh, okay. okay. So, what's the story, my guy? Yeah, yeah. 
So beyond the rift. Okay, so yes. there, there's a team of three people. Yep. Um, there's a guy who may be the captain. Um, there's someone else. <laughs> and there's a girl that look, kind of looks green, so I'm not even sure if she's human or what. That's, that's their beginning. They're on a ship. They're setting a course, um, an automatic course for their ship, and about yep. to go into stasis for the long journey. Um, everyone knows what stasis is, I'm sure, you know, is where you, you get cryogenically frozen for a long journey, and then you're uh, revived after that time to back to life. Uh, to get on with things um so yeah they're put into stasis um then they come out of stasis they wake up and they're greeted by a team of people in suit uh, in space suits that they weren't expecting and they're they've gone of course um the person one of the main person happens to be the captain's ex-partner by the looks of it or someone that he's yeah none in his life before um and straight away for me you're suspicious a little bit who is is this really her or is she a clone or is, what's going on yeah because some of the other people didn't really particularly kind of were fond of her that the other girl the other lady yeah. person she yeah, wasn't but, well she straight away she passes yeah. out as well and yeah and and yeah you're just suspicious because it's like wow fancy b- bumping into you up you know and it's like Half of it, yeah, you kind of believe this fate story, but at the same time, you're kind of half thinking, okay, what, you know, what is she? What um, is the chances, right? Because she says yeah. you're hundreds and thousands of yeah. light meters off, of course. Yes. So wherever they were supposed to go, she headed in that direction. Yeah. And they met halfway. You're like, there's a chance of that. But if he's in the complete opposite yeah. this direction there's there'd be very very little chance of them meeting very little chance, but i believe in fate i believe in that sort of thing and being as i have no Ab- absolutely beautiful fate but, of the furious yeah but it's <laughs> it's i mean i was I, I personally my first thought was um maybe a clone of some kind yeah um anyway he ends up spending or the, they put the girl back into cryogenesis because she was uh passing out and having headaches and stuff um, she was had cryo sickness or something they called it. So he spends the night with the girl that we, his ex, who we don't know if it's ex or not. There's um, a sex scene, nude scenes and stuff, um, which uh, this series seems to love doing that stuff because obviously adult, you got the chance to do that, so they just take the opportunity quite a bit. Um, and then yes, yeah, she reveals that they're actually even way further, of course, they're actually in a different galaxy now, which is pretty much impossible if in anyone that follows science knows that that's pretty in pretty much impossible in reality and probably in most it looks like it's impossible it in the terms maybe even of this universe that it's like being that far away is just absolutely impossible um but he really wants to know why yeah. But he wants he wants to know who she is for real. Um, yeah. As you say, they t- take the girl, the other girl, out of cryogenesis again, and she's like, "That's definitely not her. That's definitely not your your partner." Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then he he demands to know, okay, who re- who is she really? And then you get the reveal. Yeah, and it seems like it's just some sort of alien kind of creature. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's really an old guy at this stage. Yeah, he's, he's an really old aged. Guy. I mean, yeah, um, the, the, when the veil is is lifted to see what the world is, yeah, he's like an old guy with a massive beard. Everything is just an absolute mess of just weirdness and tentacly, well, like organic stuff all around them. Yeah, and it seems like the other guys were dead. Um, yeah. the other crew members because they yeah, seem like they right. were there but they weren't. Mm. So I. I almost got the feeling that he's now in and she's kind of like in his head and obviously that's the real world maybe yes. or the she's real... planted a new idea in his head yeah, and then the real... every day he wakes up and she has the same sort of conversations with him and it's uh, and this time he broke out of that loop because he asked for these things yeah. but I think as they're learning more about him they're putting more and more memories into his head 
and they're trying mm-hmm. to trick him and they might be trying to get information out of him about planet earth and they're going to try and invade earth or something maybe, maybe that's why they're keeping him alive and they're quite not suspicious keep... then aren't you of this, guy, of this alien race well yeah why, but why are they keeping him alive and giving him a false memory that's yeah. why I think they must be trying to get something out of him mm, well for me I, b- I believe the the spider spider monster story which was that everyone ends up in the same place when they're displaced and that she's gone through this many times is what she says of 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 trying to just um basically uh, impl- going into their brain so that they're hallucinating a world and she tries to give them a nice life while they're there but they don't like it they want to see the truth they break yeah, out that they see work. that it's a monster and then they're just like yeah. and also, I want to get she... I want to be put back in yeah exactly I want to be put back in and then have my moment wiped and let's just go start um, and also because when he, when he beg when he wants to get break free she could have just said no I'm not going to let you see the reality but she she, she a, a tear comes out of her eye and she's like okay but you know it's it's going to ruin our relationship that we've just started I just want to love you in your brain. You're going to see me as a spider now. So, yeah, like, I, she has, I, com- she has compassion for the guy. I'm, I'm on the opposite end. They were just <laughs> trying to get some... Because the other two crew members clearly, obviously, look like they've died. He's yeah. aged. And yeah, he's got crashed. a lot older. So you, Okay, so you're, you're thinking they crash-landed, they died, they kept him alive, and they just well, keep he, feeding, alive, pumping him yeah. this memory in a loop... And he's broken out. Maybe this is the first time he's broken out the loop because he wants maybe to know. He, maybe he woke up the first time that he saw that, and he was just so horrified that he, you know, he his brain rejected it. He he went into a panic, and they just I don't know, sedated him and started giving him the nicer memories, nicer life. Yeah. Tried to keep him in their own version of cryogenesis, where they were, he was living in a brain world. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 on the opposite side. I, I think the aliens are there for uh, okay. That's fine. For, that's... Despite despite the fake tear that she put on, yeah, um, and the fact that she makes out that she still loves him, yeah, and that she corrects him when they says how many years it's been since they've been together or something, all that stuff. I think I don't like them. I don't <laughs> like their motives because <laughs> I think if it's it, just a, an ugly uh, spider monster that. If it's no that one can bad, love, no one can love the spider monster when they see him. If, uh, if he goes uh, crazy, you're just like, okay, but this is reality. Deal with it. Now, if he goes crazy, it's fine. Leave yeah, him to it, and yeah. you're not going to change my world just for you. I'm going to change who I they, am. They wipe their mem- I think they, it would have been better if they kept his memory and said, you know, well, give him a choice. Um, you can stay in the matrix. You can stay in that real world, or you can stay in the matrix. Yeah, and we can. I can be a hot girl and yeah, you know, we can sleep together. You can have, and you can always be that a fit guy life. from yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. You've got a choice. You can, you know, now what do you want to do? And maybe he did make that choice already. We just don't know. It. And he yeah. said, yeah, wipe my memory of the spider. I don't want to see it. I can't deal with it. Maybe but, after yeah. she forced herself on him the first time, then he saw the spider thing. And now he's in a constant loop that he's had sex with the spider thing. Yeah. If she never did, then he'd be like, okay, so this planet is just ruled by the spider and it, mm. and it's never done anything to me. We can live together as normal people. It could be my pet. I didn't like this episode. But she just got a bit too intimate with him with, yeah. before telling him the truth, which was, was never a good idea. Exactly. <laughs> so the whole thing was rotten for me. Rotten? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I need to find it on this one. It's the f- <laughs> second one I saw, I think, right? So yeah. The spider thing cares. Yeah, one. Yeah, uh, you loved it. Fresh. I get yeah, I thought fresh, you did. Only sixty yeah. percent fresh, but it's a fresh. Because uh, you and your spiders. Um. Yeah, I mean it, the animation looks really good, and it no. kept you guessing a little bit. And no. obviously, we've got different opinions on the whole thing, so it's got all that going for it. <laughs> it does, yeah. And yeah. it's just a, it's not a good episode. <laughs> and it looks good. <laughs> yeah, you know what? The, the for um for the animation, like when Final Fantasy came out years ago. And it had yeah. this sort of look and feel about it. It's got so much better since, and this looks great. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely. this this is for me like uh, like style. This one was style over substance, while the other episode was all about the substance. 
<laughs> so what you're saying is that this was all about story and not about action. Like it. <laughs> yes. Didn't like it. I didn't like it. Exactly. It had story substance. <laughs> okay. Instead so um the next one on the list, um okay. should I give you the title and then do the story the review? Yes, you give me the title, okay. I want to know the title, see if I can guess okay. what one it is. So th- this one, um, I've, I've got it down as When the Yogurt Took Over. Oh, yes. You're going to explain it. Go. <laughs> yes. OK. So th- this one is about a group of scientists who are working on yogurt and they're, um, and they're kind of playing around with it and they, they, they make a breakthrough. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the yogurt becomes sentient and it becomes clever. And in the morning, well, at, at the end of the day, she takes it home, puts it in a fridge. And then in the morning when she's about to have her breakfast, the yogurt starts talking to her mm-hmm. um, and then uh, the yogurt asks for Ohio um, oh, yes. and in payment um, and if the the leaders and the rest of the free world will kind of help and the yogurt will help them with all sorts of stuff and they'll, they'll solve it'll solve their uh, financial problems financial debt if you don't I'll just problem. go to uh, China because they're super smart and they know, they they can figure out all the science and everything like that. So yeah, and this this yoga is incredibly intelligent. And then he goes to Ohio, and Ohio starts to prosper, um, yeah. and it's just getting bigger. It's getting more and more intelligent, and it's given them a set of instructions for mm-hmm. a year's worth of do this, mm-hmm. and if you do yeah. it as per and don't deviate, you'll avoid any catastrophes, and you yeah. guys will be amazing. And they're like, and he, yeah, we'll do that. That's what, <laughs> that's what every government would say to a piece of yoga, right? Happen. Exactly. We're going to do and, exactly what you said. And the whole the global economy collapses, except for Ohio. Because they deviated from the plan. Yes. Um, and despite everything kind of the yogurt said to them. Yeah. Um, and then it seems it's like... The best thing to fail, basically. Yeah, because they don't listen. That's what yeah. happens. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and then it seems like uh, the governments then hand over all power to the yogurt yeah. and now we've become um the yogurt reigns the whole earth or the whole yeah. planet and we are all we all bow, bow down to the yogurt the yogurt yes yeah. you see the yogurt that. being set up in the oval office yes I, the president of the world i love i love this episode <laughs> it's a good episode it's really funny yeah it it's is like, isn't it's it? abstract the it's, animation it's, it's is different to, well. yeah it's 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 just yeah. a nice light funny and it's a short really short episode i think it's mm. like six minutes or seven minutes but it's punchy it's good it's funny and it's and it's narratively told as well mm. fresh yeah fresh um i need to find it on my list hold on <laughs> um talk about it <laughs> i need to find it on the list um CGI. Um, but obviously, I like this. 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 Yeah. Um, I can't remember if I give it a fresh or frozen. I think I must a fresh or frozen, fresh or rotten. Um, but yeah, I'd give it a fresh. I think because it was quite funny. Um, yeah. And and by the end, we're like the the humans are are worried that they're gonna let, get left behind because the yogurt are dispersing themselves out across the universe yeah and that's quite good as well like what ha- what would happen yeah is that could that be our future like that we create something that just leaves the earth to populate the universe and we're the ones that created it and get left behind yeah interesting interesting okay no i, I really like that one yeah we're in agreement finally okay <laughs> Okay, I so the, like, I think I couldn't find the score on my list because it's in the wrong order. I might have gone in rotten. <laughs> so, the, so the next one, um, I'd like you to tell me what it's about. So, okay. this one's called Good Hunting. What's the story, my guy monkey? I would like to know. Good Hunting. Is this the yes. one where it's like a shooter video game? No. Okay. What, this is the one set in China, or um, has that kind of. Um, oh, okay. Asian feel to it. Yeah, I know the one. So it's so it's anime style. Yeah. Um, starts off with a guy and his son. Is yes, right? shape shifting. Um, yeah, thing. Yeah, they are that's spirit, the one. Spirit hunters. Yeah, because um, they they uh, defend humanity against the the 
spirits um and straight away i don't know about you but you get a feeling that that's not necessarily the that they're not necessarily in the right just from the feeling you get um then the spirit they're hunting comes out she's walking along she's uh apparently um bewitched a man a rich man yeah um and is and goes to sleep with him every night um and basically i mean that straight there you think well a rich surely that you know a rich person has has ordered assassins to kill this girl because he's been bewitched like that's just like a standard story of someone falls in love with someone that they don't want to them to fall in love with and tries to get them killed it's like oh maybe they're just a rich family and they want to uh, make sure he marries someone else but anyway the the story is that uh, then they attack the girl um, the lady yep the lady um she starts to bewitch the boy it seems like he doesn't he's frozen in place he's supposed to throw some stuff over her to to make to stop her transforming something um but he doesn't do it straight away so then his father has to do it in the end and yeah the woman transforms into her half state they call it where she's a cat lady basically um and then they're she darts off and the battle isn't over they chase her over the rooftops to um i think it's an, an abandoned church or temple or something um and the boy goes around the back where he meets it looks like the lady's daughter who is just a cat jumps out yeah and, but then she transforms into the half state and then in, i think it's just the half state so then she's the cat lady and they have a conversation and she says no, it's the wrong way around. We don't bewitch people. Um, we, he just fell in love with her. And then our, our race, we can't stop hearing their cries once someone's in love with us. So we have to go to them every night just to keep them quiet. So it kind of puts the shoe on the other foot. Um, then uh, Lady and Dad come through. Dad chops Lady's head off. Yes, he does in front of the sun. Yeah, Lady's dead. And then it's fast forward a few years. Um, yeah. the, the boy keeps the girl alive. He says, no, I didn't see anyone else. Um, so that means that I guess he believes in her. Um, and then the world moves on, which was interesting. Um, and then it becomes sort of a steampunk play, steampunk story where uh, China's been taken over by Britain, of course. And they're serving, serving Britain and they're on a high mountain top. Uh, which is all steampunk. Um, everything is um, run he by seems steam. To, he's, he's become like an engineer, hasn't he? At this yeah. stage, the kid. The kid's yeah, grown he's up. He's a... like an adult, yeah. and he's really fascinated by um, the, 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 the evolution of technology, and he's really into all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and he's really good at it as well. Yeah. It kind of rings a bell to us when we were at uni. Everything was changing. Uh, we were into computers at the time. Well, I say we. I mean, you may have been. I was never I was. interested. What were you there for? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly I was interested back in the noughties when everything was changing. And, you know, um, technology was constantly changing and still is in some respects. Uh, well, it always is. Um, but yeah, and the girl is also in that city, but yeah. she's, she's now working as a prostitute because she's trapped in her human form. Um and yeah because if she leaves the world that she used to live in i think it's the magic area or the world that's what allowed her to transform between the two states yeah and i think also the steam, steam and technology sort of oh yeah notes. that's it because she kept coughing and stuff didn't she yeah yeah oh yeah the steam yeah coughing okay yeah i knew, I knew there was something to do with it sort of polluting the magic in the world yeah um and yeah so they they um they meet up again mm-hmm. he saves her from an attack they meet up again, they just have a chat and then they just go off carry on doing their own things. But then steampunk develops a bit more into yeah. robotic steampunk punk, and he starts to be an automa- automaton expert as well. He builds a little rabbit. Um, and then she comes to him for help because she's been transformed into a half-human, half-robot. Um, 
well, you know, steam robots, and is like, help. It seemed like the bottom half, right? Her legs yeah. initially were changed well, first. Yeah, we sh- we're showing in the cutscene the legs being chopped off and changed, but then we see that in her reveal that already her whole body's been changed. She's only got the head left. Yeah. Um, and she's like, help me. Um, and she said, she tells the story of how, now this is the bit that's a bit strange for me. She tells the story of how uh, a nice guy, seemed like a nice guy, transformed into a robot because he gets, it's a, a fantasy for him. That's what he likes. Um, and, but then she, because she's a robot, she's super powerful and just crushes his head and that sort of thing. So like, why does he, she really need his help? I was thinking like now she's a robot that's more powerful than the people that attacked her. But also she wants to be able to transform into her old uh, cat state again, sort of the in-between state. Um, I think she, she may be a robot and she may be mm, stronger, yeah. but it's like, it's like her movements like Robocop. Yeah. And she wants to be more like T-1000, yeah. where she can kind of be more fluid. Yeah. She can run on rooftops and att- yeah. uh, kill people like assassins yeah. and assassinate them without being heard when she was clunk, okay. clunk, clunk, maybe. Yeah. And that's, that's mean, kind of where his skill set yeah, might exactly, come, yeah. to streamline all that. Yeah, that's a good, good point, yeah. And also, but the thing is, what happens next is he builds her a suit, seemingly, that also allows, also fits her other form. Because then he throws the stuff over her that was thrown at the woman at the beginning to transform her into the cat state again. Yeah. He goes out as a cat robot killing. to to go killing. Yes. But the, yeah, which is which is great little twist ending, and it is I, I really like this one. But also the the um like if he could turn her into a cat just like that with the with the liquid in the first place when. He spoke to her and she said, I want to be able to transform into a cat again. Why didn't you do that in the first place? I think deep down he had that fear that if she gets turned into a cat, either one of two things, she might leave him and he's yeah. his only friend. Um, okay. And two, she might actually act on those things and kill people maybe because yeah. he's still got it in the back of his mind. He did, his dad would have drilled it into him for years and years that they are still killers. They well, still maybe... do this and so yeah, or maybe she would, she would have been in danger still as a cat, and it's only now that she's a robot. Yeah, can be a robot cat that she can be a, a real exactly. Killer. And this all comes back to episode one, where the three robots are talking about cats. Yeah, over and and killing. Cat. Now, this is an interesting one because almost all of them have either cats or boobs and nudity in them, but this yeah. one has both. This yeah, is, cats, cats with boobs. This, this has new, yeah, cats with boobs and a few erections as well. Oh uh, yeah, very early on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was a standout, uh, notable thing about this episode. <laughs> and I yeah. liked it. I liked, I liked the whole episode actually. It was a good episode. Ah, what's one of your you freshest? It? Yeah, it's um, fresh. as as you know, like there's there's too much story. There's too much dialogue. <laughs> um, You're just and you know, it's. Purpose. Tell me and this is what you said before. This is what I said the first time I watched it. Really? There's a lot okay. of there's a lot of story, there's a lot of exposition, there's not much happening, <laughs> and then the world moves on and they're still stuck in the old ways. But he's evolving and he actually makes it's it you know what I, I enjoyed this one, but I couldn't re watch it though, I think. Yeah. Because but yeah, I'd, I'd I'd give it a fresh. Oh nice. Okay. You're giving it a fresh. I'm well, mine's fresh. 85% fresh. Excellent. Brilliant. So um, we're, we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're back. Agreed. We're okay. Well, just about agreed, almost. Uh, <laughs> I rewatched this one, and I did enjoy re- re-watching it. So, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> the next one for me to describe is oh, yeah, The Dump. Yes. The, the Dump. dump. Yes, yeah, I know the you one. remember this one? Okay, so it's like um, a city inspector comes up to see this house which I think he's been told they need to demolish or debine or something. I can't remember it's that starting bit. Yeah. yeah, and then the guy there, he starts to tell a story about this um, dump creature that came, came along and it's um, consuming things around them. Um, and in, and it doesn't kill him because he called it his pet and instead it kills other people there. So it seems like he... And then during that story... It kills his friend, um, yeah. um, and and then at the end of this one, he's shown eating the inspector, 
and it just seems like it's it's like it's it's a guy with a dog, but a dog in this example is a dump monster, a monster who just grew out of all that dump stuff that he's got around him. Yes, he's a, he's just a hoarder, and all that mm. hoarding stuff has turned it into uh, a monster. Mm. But he plays with it and he treats it like a like a pet, basically. Yeah, it's basically a giant dog. Yeah, and a kill a killer uh, dog. As soon, and as soon as the inspector arrives. Like you hear him calling Otto. Is it Otto yeah. his name? And yes. You, and I know for me, I was straight away thinking Otto sounds like Otto. It's going to be a, a giant robot dog. So yeah. Straight away, I'm thinking that. And all the way through, you getting the story. It was kind of boring in that sense because you knew what was coming. But then when I re- it was rewatchable though, it kept me engaged the second time. So, what did you think of it? Rotten. Rotten. I, I, yeah. It. It's. It's that it's Not that story bit action. that kind of that story bit that's quite boring. Like uh, mm-hmm. the inspector turns up and you're looking around and you could have I don't know maybe you could have done it a couple of ways where the, you know you don't need to explain that the random story in the middle which was quite slow and boring. Yeah. Maybe the inspector comes in and he's and it feels like he's being stalked all the way through, and then yeah. he gets to the guy and he, the guy says oh yeah yeah um, and and they then have a chat and then it turns out that there yeah. is something else in the dump. But the thing that in the dump maybe pretends to attack the main guy, mm. not the inspector. So the inspector runs away thinking he's free and then yeah. he eats him at the end. And it's revealed that okay. it was kind of like a ploy together. Like he never killed yeah. um, the old guy. It was just kind of like they were playing with the inspector. And yeah, so, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Slight horror twist on it. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. like it that much. It's, it's mainly just because yeah. the the middle bit. I mean, there's a dump yeah. monster. I get it. Like, just yeah. do something cool with it. Okay, so I was all ready to give this a, a rotten as well because, um, yeah, because it was predictable and all that, all the stuff you said. Really, it, it, you're right. It could have been done in a much more different way that could have worked. But then when I rewatched it, it was engaging enough for me to watch again. So I gave it just about just about a fresh, just scraping in and in on it because oh, I did actually want to sit there and, and listen to it. And the second time I watched it, also there there was something strange as well is that he sees that there's a dog in the in the actual creature, which he he then explains. Oh, that's why this creature, it was just junk, but now it acts like a dog because it ate a dog. Okay. Now he's eating his friend. Yeah. And the and now he he's acts like he, but no, no, so he's eating his friend and that's why he is now Otto's friend as well because he ate his friend. It becomes whatever it's like, whatever is eaten. Okay, so now, yeah, the, the, on the last thing we see is him eating the inspector. So what is he going to become now? Is he going to come and become a bureaucrat and try and chuck his friend out of the out of the dump because he's going to become like the inspector now? So as, that's an aspect that I missed the first time. I see um, what you mean. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't think of it that way. I, I do remember the dog bit, and I yeah, thought he just I, acted like a dog. I didn't realize his his yeah. characteristics tweet slightly once yeah. eating his friend. That's when I realized. Oh, that's why it's his, why it became his friend suddenly. It added up a bit more the second time. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense at the end then. So, yeah, rubbish story. Needs, needs fixing. <laughs> okay. I'll give it a pass once you give it a remake. So <laughs> Brilliant. So the, the next one um, that I've got on the list is Helping Hands. Helping Hands. This is the one where I can't remember what stopped me off. The, the astronaut. Oh, ha- ha- the astronaut. Um, gravity, but... Re- <laughs> The movie Gravity, but not with Sandra Bullock. That's right. That's all it yes. is. Yes, it's except big. better. Uh, okay, so Whoa, what, I, what I wrote for this one was... <laughs> where, where did I write I literally wrote better than Gravity. That was my... That was my... That was my... Wow. So you do, the story is... You want me to tell the story? Yeah, what's the story? My guy, um, rescue. <laughs> rescue. Do the tune. What's the story? My guy, monkey, I would like to know. Oh, that's the story. That's the tune. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a a girl, a lady on a space mission. Yeah. To it's just to a satellite that's going around Earth. Yeah. I think um, maybe a space station or no, it's just a satellite. She's just doing some repair on it, something like that. 
Um, but then she is hit by a piece of debris that's just yeah. going around the earth at huge speed, which is actually a full on reality up there, just uh, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a, a little screw or something just nicks her, nicks her back uh, of her suit. Uh, it, she it bashes her into the into the satellite and then bashes her away from the satellite, and she's stranded. She's losing oxygen, um, and it looks like she's not going to make it. Uh, they're going to send a rescue team, but the... Um, 58 minutes or an hour away, are they? Yeah, far. something like that, 45 minutes, um, at, something like that. And then it comes up on the screen. I quite like the screen use, like, on this one. It comes up on her screen. You can see the minutes, like, 15 minutes or something that she's got left. And it's like, I'm not going to make it. And then she just cuts off the communication. Um, and that's it. No, that's not it though. She, after a while, she's she looks down at her watch, and then she realizes she could use it to try and keep the oxygen in while taking off her glove and throwing it so that she can get back, so that she can create push herself backwards by throwing an item away to get back towards the ship. But that fails. She misses the ship. Yes. So then she has to pull her own arm off. Oh, which is yes. obviously because it's exposed to space it's gone instantly frozen solid so she can sort of try and crush it off like an ice cube or a nice lolly and she does that she pulls her arm off throws it away so that it pushes her back towards the ship and then does she make it or not we get to see the back of her chair and we're wondering did she make it and she did that's <laughs> <Yeah, it's> spoilers. <laughs> I was yes. going to leave that one. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, uh, and she I, makes exactly. I think what's happened is she threw her hand, uh, her arm into space, and one of those aliens eats the arm and gets yeah. a taste for humanity. And therefore, yeah. that episode that I really liked and you absolutely hated, yeah. that's why they're trying to get onto planet Earth. It triggers everything else in this in the series. We're just making fake links. Um, the helping <laughs> hand. This episode. Um, it's true. I did not like. It's rotten. I, no, I didn't. I did, like it. No, I didn't like it. It's, uh, the the whole kind of the stakes, the fifteen minute, the cl- oh, 14 minutes clock countdown. Didn't really care for. No. The the rescue team was quite far out. I was like, that's fine. If she makes it, good. If she doesn't, I just, I, just, I think because it's such a short film, uh, sort of not, short thing, and it's it. one person. Yeah, and I wasn't invested in her. I would, I didn't really care enough about her to want her to live or to die. True, um, I mean, and that's when the only it's reason Sandra why. Bullock doing it, obviously, I don't know if that's better or worse. But at least you got if you've got an hour or two with a human going through emotions, then maybe yeah, you would you would feel something more for the character. Yeah, I mean, but... if, if you're watching Sandra in 3D floating around in front of you, I'm like, I'll rescue you. <laughs> but this um no I, I don't know what it was i just i just couldn't um the, there's nothing wrong with her as a person the character it's just because you're not with the character long enough for me yeah I couldn't re- relate to her to be able to there's this peril there's these things going on that i, I didn't really care about yeah uh, when she threw her arm out i was like oh whoa i was interested yeah. but then she was alive at the end how how does she not bleed out is she okay I'm... Okay, there is one good thing about it, and that's okay. The... It's the end, right? Okay, yeah, the end where, where he says, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I thought you meant that. He yeah. says over the radio, Do you still radio, need some help or something? Do you, do, you, do you still need a hand? Ah, uh, yes. And she says, You could say that or something like that. Yes, she does. <laughs> Quality line because she's just chopped her hand off. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah, rotten for me. I'll give her a hand. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> So where, um, where's this on your um, the scale? You know what? I'm just going to agree with you that uh, rotten on the sense that it, it there wasn't much to it. It's simple enough. Mm. It's be- it's better than gravity. I'll give it that. But yeah, <laughs> apart from that, um, yeah, I mean it's fine for what it does. I thought she the lady was quite good. She did okay for a, for an animated face. Yeah, but I'm sure there are better animated faces as well because she does a little scream in a in her suit as well, and it does not look good. It looks fake. Yeah. So yeah, let's give this a rotten. She's not Don't, real. Not worth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not real enough. Okay, so so the next one, um, the one yeah. I need to tell you about is one called Shapeshifters. Shapeshifters. Okay. 
I can't remember this one yet. Okay, oh, so this, this one... My guy, Rick. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so there's these two friends who work in part of the US Marines. Um, and they oh, yeah. are escorting like a convoy or something. Yes. And then they get surprised, attacked yes. by this convoy. And it turns out these, these two Marines have some heightened sense of yes. uh, environmental awareness. Yeah. And they're able well, to, to uh, uh, yeah. see things uh, which are happening quite far away or hear things which are yeah. even further stuff or smell things or whatever it is. Yeah. And they stop the assault. And, um, and that whole, the whole start, I, I was right. Yeah, this is quite good. This is good. Yeah. Right? This is, yeah. um, and then, then they go back it to camp good. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it looks great as well. Uh, they go back to camp and then uh, one of them, one of the uh, Marines goes off with another team uh, bit, another scouting mission of some sort mm. uh, and the other marine falls asleep wakes up and hears kind of like shooting and stuff happening elsewhere yeah and so he then oh, goes uh, look i need to go let me go let me go and they're like well we can't just let you in because you know there's all this red tape anyway so he eventually makes his way up to where all the noise and all the action was going and he walks through the trenches mm. and stuff and he sees this whole his whole unit mutilated literally yeah. torn to bits ripped yeah. apart all sorts yeah. of stuff and he makes his way through the thing and then he then he comes up against two werewolves mm. twist he's a werewolf uh, yes twist kind of <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then they and then there's werewolf on werewolf um action um and then he nice. wins at the end and then nice. he leaves the marines at the very end he goes this isn't my this isn't my war yeah this isn't for me yeah. and he just walks up i, and I thought that was really scared. good you think he skipped quite a lot, but I guess he kept it shorter, which is good. <laughs> um, obviously, they have the conversation, like, it's like a whole rivalry between, like, the fact that there's normal soldiers and they're called... Oh, called, yeah, yeah. And they're called they're them really, dog soldiers, really, don't they? Which is kind yeah, of a giveaway. Yeah. They really <laughs> back down on, they really don't think much of them. They, they call really, them animals. Yeah. They, uh, um, the normal... What was they normal? They're... The non werewolf people really look down on these guys, and and it's not their fight. It's not the mm. werewolves' fight that they're going to do. They're doing the bidding for the people. Yeah, it's the people who are really in the wrong. To be fair, the Marines are not the Marines, but the people who put the Marines out there in the first place. They're the ones to blame, anyway. So, yeah, there's a real class war here. Even though they need the werewolves because of their awareness and everything they can bring to the table. But all the humans mm. really don't like them. It's just apparent. There's this whole racial divide. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So they're using the werewolves, but they the soldiers aren't too keen on them. No. Um, the thing that confused me with this one is that fight, the werewolf fight. Okay. When when they transform, I found it werewolves. hard to figure out who was who was who as werewolves. Feels like a grey werewolf. Yeah, but and he's can... and he's a different coloured werewolf. Yeah, the but two contrasting like... colours. But it looked like the the other guy came out as white, and then the next one comes along, and I'm like, who's this extra werewolf? And I was confused by all that. I think I've only just figured out now who that was. <laughs> they're just they're, they're... okay. Well, I thought they were different coloured, and I was able to follow. Yeah, the, I mean, the whole fight. You I like think... action a lot more than exactly. Me. I was going to say because. You're more used to that. It's the same as when people tell me they can't tell the difference between one transformer fight and another transformer. Yeah, I can. Uh, yes. It's not that difficult. I understand they're rubbish films, but when they actually fight, I can see what's going on. I can yeah. follow it, and I think this is your same situation. For all you <laughs> knew, it was Optimus Prime fighting Optimus Prime, but there were two different. Yeah. There were there was three, but they're all different. They all had different colors. And one was winning and one was losing, and then. But I can I can tell you if it was the good guy or the bad guy. <laughs> the good not guy that, wins at the end, we, right? You know, not that they're even good guys or bad guys; they're just recruits. Yes, exactly. They're there to do bidding for other people. Yeah. So, do you know and, who the third good werewolf was then? He's like an older werewolf. He looked like kind of because he came in and he was white coloured or grey coloured. He was completely mm. different colour to the other two. So it might have just been as you get older. Yeah. Um, if you if you it's it's the same thing in dogs. Like if you if you're um, a black lab, a brown lab, um, as as the lab gets older, they will have grey hair or white yeah. hair, 
And the same thing may appear to werewolves where you might be you might be young and you have brown, luscious locks. And then mm. as you get older, you get white stubble, you get white hair. And the other dude yeah. just seems like someone who's a bit older. And he's more because he seemed to control the other guy and he was able to go, you attack the, or you come in and I'll come in and stuff. And he was calling the shots, it seemed like. Mm. So it seemed like he would be the older one and he'd be the one kind of giving the instructions or the stuff to say, you do this, I'll do this, that sort of mm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. This was really good. I really liked it. it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Fresh. Fresh. Um, what did I give it? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think it was fresh. It looked good. It looked good. Told a good story. Little story. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next one... I, I thought there were cyborgs at the beginning, though. I thought they were going to be... You? Yeah. No. Cause, I always cause got the... Sight and senses and stuff at the beginning, and it's called Love, Death, Robots. I'm expecting robots. Oh, I see. So you didn't assume <laughs> there would be normal werewolves. No. Flesh and blood. It you took me a while be... to figure that out as well when I watched it the first time. I mean, it's pretty straightforward <laughs> to follow. Mm. <laughs> um, so the next one is for... For you to explain to me, okay. what's the story, of my guy monkey, fish night, fish night? Yes, um, I think I know the one. It's the one that looks like uh, Borderlands. It's the one that looks like Borderlands. Yeah. Um, so it looks like Borderlands. Yep. They're in the desert. They're in Pandora. Yep. Yeah. Pandora. <laughs> they're, they're, they're vault hunters. They're vault hunters. No, no way. Well, they're door-to-door salesmen, I think. Um, there's a father and son. Their their car breaks down in the desert. They took a shortcut, so no one's going to come save them. It looks like that he can't fix the car. Um, so they settle down for the night. But before they do that, the the father tells the son how they're not actually in the desert. They're actually at the bottom of an ocean, or maybe. I think it's it is the desert. It gets a bit confusing whether it's the future, I think, or not. Um, but yeah, they're actually at the bottom of what used to be an ocean. And he just says, "Oh, what if animals could hunt? What if the fish could could haunt the places they lived, like we haunt houses?" Mm. And then they go to sleep. And then because he said, "What if that would happen?" It happens, <laughs> and the fish starts like just being around. And he wakes yes. up. He's like, "Oh, look! There's spirit fish everywhere." Um, yeah, and then and he his, joins them for a swim. His son, his son is like, "Yeah, I'm going to get naked and join them for a swim," even though, like, when he takes his clothes off, the clothes float well, so he didn't need to get naked, but he just gets naked so he can go off for a swim. Um, and then a spirit shark comes and kills him. Yes. The end. <laughs> the end. That's it. I think you summed it up perfectly. Rotten. It's about. It's about. It's about. As, it's got about as much story to it as the uh, gravity one. Really. Yeah, I, I, the fishes look good. They break down, um, and then the shark comes and kills him. And I was just like, fine. Yeah. I, I, just, I just did. I don't know what it was. It just. It's nothing. It was. A, it was almost like a nothing episode for me. Yeah. It was um, I, of, I understand but... what they're talking about, and I get. I get the symbolisms where you know this thing about the ghosts, and this once used to be an ocean bed. Now it's just desert, so it could potentially be they're in a world now where uh, the the sun is so hot that all the water is starting to evaporate, um, yeah. and this is now the ocean bed, and of course the, um, all the fishes and stuff that used to live there are no longer around. So obviously, in the case of a shark, he's more vengeant, but for some reason mm. he's able to join the fish world. So that's when I thought maybe they're already dead, and then his maybe. spirit was there so he could be killed by a spirit fish or yeah, a shark in this case you do see him sort of transform once he's swimming he changes color yeah. to the spirit so yeah okay uh yeah it's a little bit confusing i guess but yeah i, did, yeah. I didn't enjoy it at all so it was a bit of a weird it was a bit of a weird what if and I, I do like weirdness so there is that but and i'll say just like the the uh, gravity episode i did actually want to i did actually stay engaged to watch it again but uh, yeah i think i'll give it a a rotten as well mm. it, di- it did engage me to rewatch it enough but um at the end of the day still nothing much happens it's kind of like 
this thing happened. You, you could have told all of that with one picture rather than an animation. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so the next one is Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Okay. That's yours to tell, yeah? Yes, it is. I like, I, I like this one, so to tell it well. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, this one is... So if anyone who watches Handman's Tale and Orange is a New Black, there's a girl in there. She's, she's from the UK. She represents... Um, she's in this. Um, and, and it looks just like her. But animated. It looks like real life animated, really well. Animated. Yeah, really, really well done. Um, basically, she she's a pilot. She boards a plane called uh, which has the number thirteen, um, and she, and she's a bit reluctant at first because you know this is uh, I think this is the uh, plane that came back where everybody died or something. Yeah, it's off its last twice, kind of. Uh, everyone had died and it still managed to survive and come. Yeah, back. and Called so unlucky. 13 or lucky 13 or lucky 13 and anyway so she goes off for its first kind of mission and they get flanked by like enemies and um there's these marines she tells them get back in the ship um as one of the other planes get destroyed yeah as everything else around has been destroyed blown up they they're the only kind of surviving troops and then they kind of fast forward Mm -hmm. another 18 19 mission without any casualties they talk about so she goes yeah. off on other machines yeah, no. they come back there seems to be nothing wrong and it actually becomes lucky number 13 instead yeah, and she and keeps notice. yeah and she narrates the whole thing they're talking about how her bond with the ship yeah. and and how it seems like the ship knows her as well as she knows the ship and they have this yeah. incredible bond between the two of them um and it's not like it's it's a metallical metal object anymore it seems like there's a relationship yeah. between the two. It's and got a personality. Yeah, and it talks. It kind of talks to her, if you want to say that. And there, there's definitely mm. a love between these two, um, yeah. not in a sexual way, just kind of like <laughs> a good kind of understanding, similar to yeah, like the love. Yeah, this one has no sex scene. <laughs> yeah, it's like a love uh, have... a car has for the uh, um, for the driver. It's that sort of thing. Yeah, she doesn't sit oh. on the joystick. Yeah, it's like Vin <laughs> Diesel in his car. Um, <clears throat> I bet he was Vin Diesel. I bet Vin Diesel would sit on the joist, uh, on the gear stick. Sit on the gear stick. Um, and then they go to, then they go a little bit further, and they actually get to the the next mission, and they show you this next mission. Mm. Um, they go there, but then the ship, I think, crashes, and it's and it can't get back mm. up, and they're they're being attacked by this enemy. Um, so she sets off like the self destruct mode, yeah. and she runs oh. off after saying goodbye to the ship and telling. Yeah. That she loves the ship and stuff. And then mm. they run off and they hide. And she thinks, why is it not blowing up? What's happening? Well, why is it not done yeah. anything? As yeah. the enemy gets close to the ship and her entire team takes cover, that's when it explodes. Yeah. And it kills everybody around it. Yeah. Um, and, and she watches um, kind of like her, her friend, her kind of like her, basically a part of her family, basically take down mm. everything and kind of kill itself in this way. Um, and she wins all these kind of awards and stuff, doesn't she? And she gets this like yeah. brand new ship. Um, but she never at the forgets. End of it. Yeah, but she, she never says forgets. she never forgets. Lucky, lucky thirteen. Yeah, and that's why forget. I really like this episode. She never forgets her first. Out of ship. all of the episodes we talk with talking about today, this is the only whoa, one. Whoa, this is the only one. Yeah, this oh, is the crap. only one that made me feel something. I actually felt for Lucky Thirteen and her relationship with it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I like this one. I think this is fresh, but I didn't feel the same attachment as you just did. Uh, I, uh, that's a shame. That's a shame. I did. I did really like this one. Though. I love that element between her and the ship. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't like some of the other ones, which is about a cat or people <laughs> having sex or nudity yeah. or grotesque violence. It just seems like it's her doing these missions on the this skin, ship, dude. and then the two of them really building on this incredible relationship yeah it's really good loved it yeah, it's good. fresh um yeah fresh fresh for me as well um also when if you notice when i rewatched it um you remember when they the the plane is grounded and it's all being shot up she's and she's i don't know if you set the self-destruct or not at this point i think she's just getting out of the cockpit but you I remember she gets her out. stuck yeah, yeah she, she gets stuck and then i know it's the second time i didn't realize the first time but like it's holding her stuck and then 
the underneath her gets blown up by by enemy yeah, fire. Yeah, that's how she gets and, out. And then it lets go of her. So it's like yeah. the ship saves her life then as well yes. by holding on to her, which is nice. Um, and then yeah, it sets the self destruct. It doesn't. And then she says, "Oh, it wants to live because it won't blow up." Um, but then eventually, yeah, it blows it when it, it's all surrounded by the enemy. Then it does blow up and kill it, kill all the, all the bad guys yeah. as well, um, which was nice. Like like it sacrificed it, itself. Yeah, it had a choice and it chose to sacrifice itself for her. I can see why you like this episode over mm. all the other episodes in yeah. the whole whole franchise because you love the Fast and Furious films <laughs> and, and you have affiliation with all kind of mechanical vehicles. <laughs> so, well, now you know this would be the next not, evolutionary right. step Maybe from just... cars to airplanes, and so you you feel for it, right? <laughs> I hate that series. <laughs> yeah. I, hate Love it. I hate I hate I even hate war war film well not war films, war games and all that sort of thing. Um but still I liked this one. Like it wasn't about the battles, it was about this relationship. Yeah. So, yeah I liked it. I liked it as well. I think I gave it a hundred percent. Who did? Me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <100%. Yes. laughs> so so the next one for you is What's oh, the story, my guy monkey? Zemo Blue. Zemo Blue. Yes. Okay. Um, this one I only half rewatched, so um, that tells you about whether it was engaging or not for the second viewing. But um, this is about an artist. Yeah. And we get told the story of the artist who started out as a portrait painter. We get to see yes him in portrait yeah, yeah, yeah. painting. Um, but he, it wasn't big enough for him. He wanted to do something bigger. So he starts painting bigger pictures and of the universe. And I guess thinking about the universe as well, like philosophy and things. And he, he gets real famous because of it. He gets bigger and bigger, but then he draws a small square in the middle of one of his paintings, which is a small blue square, which he calls Zima, Zima blue, uh, Zima blue. Um, And then slowly all of his pictures gets that square in the middle getting bigger and bigger and bigger until he's just producing pictures of giant blue squares. That's what he's producing. But he's still famous and um, people are like, yeah, they're, they're still enamored by by his uh, abstract weirdness that he's, that he's done there um, in his search for truth in the universe, I guess, and artistic stuff um but then we could uh we've been told this by a woman who is a reporter or something um she's on her way to interview him because yes. he's got his next piece he he's now a solitary living on an island or something yeah um, he's become a recluse yeah pretty yeah. much and he's working on his his next exhibit Major project yeah and it's, he's building a swimming pool and he's like yeah this is my next project um, and then he tells her a story of of why he's doing he's he's making this um, swimming pool, and he tells a story of a la- lady who uh, built machines, um, and one of her favorite machines though that she built was a pool cleaner. So it just goes around the pool cleaning the edges of the pool. Um, so yeah, that's why she, he's building a swimming pool. Um, but then the the lady decided to give the pool cleaner the ability to see full in full color, um, and then basically the story goes that the uh, the AI that was controlling that was probably pretty amazed by the being able to see color, and, yeah. and evol- evolved its AI, and then different owners took over and added different parts to it evolved yes. its AI again, gave it different uh, limbs and stuff to do different work, and then the reveal that it, that slowly built up into becoming the artist that we're talking about. So the artist actually started out as a pool cleaner, and then we see the final exhibit. He jumps in, everyone is there watching, like there's, he's got a, an audience now, and the camera crews and media and everything, and he just 
run take he just disrobes and and dives into the pool and then just t- st- lets go of all of the pieces all, all of the pieces of him just fall apart come to bits and is just left as the original pool cleaner that he started out as and he just goes around cleaning the pool I think you missed just just one bit. You know, the, the blue miss. color is significant because oh, yes. when she did the thing, that's the first thing he ever yeah. saw. The that, that's what that square. Yeah, yeah. This the first color a... you would have seen would have been that tile on the yeah the, the tile color of the swimming pool. Such a good, such a good episode. Yeah. You like I this one? I love this one. I yeah. think it's quite it's it's bittersweet, right? So as as a robot as he was before where he was just cleaning, he had no concept of anything. And then they slowly started, we started to feed him stuff and give him information yeah. and, and make him more and more advanced. And he realized, you know what, there's nothing here in, in these worlds that it mm-hmm. kind of truly will interest me or elevate me or elevate the whole planet yeah. or whatever, make them think to get them to yeah. the next step that, you know what, I'm going to just chuck away all yeah. these stress, all these things that are around me. And I'm going to go back yeah. to the one thing I loved doing, which was, the yeah. very first thing and what I'm programmed to do in the first place. Yeah. So I, I, think it's very I, I loved it. Yeah, I it's really, really like this to the one. human experience. Of like... For me, this is better than um, uh, falling in love with a helicopter <laughs> or airplane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for take that when you Vin reflect Diesel. on it. Yeah, of course. When you reflect on it yourself, I don't say the the episode itself is emotive, but I did. I do say relating to it, it's it's very good. Yeah. In a sense, yeah, it's relatable for a human in the, in our search for truth and and release from our our problems and overcomplications of things. So he just realizes that in in all his search that he, that he just wants to go back to that sort of simple state, maybe like the soul state, where you, you just have enough to to exist and enjoy existing. But yeah, that's quite good. I gave it eighty yeah. percent pass. Wow! Yeah, um, really fresh. I really liked it. I think it's clever. I think it's um, it's very kind of based on what currently society is and how we as a people may have evolved. But actually, going mm. back to basics is what would make most people happy. Yeah, definitely. If not yeah. all people, but yeah, it was a great episode. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is for me. Yeah. Okay. okay so this is Ice Age. Okay. Time for jingle. What's it all about, <laughs> my guy, Brie? Brilliant. Uh, so this this was directed by Tim Miller. So this is the guy from Deadpool and one of the main people behind it. Um, and this is the yeah. only one that's got live, real people. So it stars Topher Grace. Oh, okay, this one. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Um, um, that's that seventy show, is it? Is that the guy? Uh, Topher Grace, yeah. yeah. And Mary Elizabeth <laughs> Winston is from Ten Cloverfield Lane. Okay, yeah. Uh, she's also going to be in the new Birds of Prey film. Uh, okay. She was also in Scott Pilgrim. Okay. So that helps. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, they make a great couple, those two. Um, it's <laughs> it's about these two... Uh, not enough sex in this one, though. There is, this is, there is just what, the why one. Why are they not doing it? Why are they doing the real people? <laughs> um, they move into a house young. and they see that there's a refrigerator there. And um, they they celebrate by having some wine, and he wants to have an ice cube with his wine, and so he gets a, get some oh, ice out of the the refrigerator, and then what they find is when they open the ice, there's like a a, a mammoth, a full size, well, you uh, know, ice ice size mini oh. um, mammoth, and then they do some digging around in the freezer, and they see that there's a whole civilization developing within their freezer, and it's going from like. Uh, medieval time to industrial revolution to modern things like that so after a few minutes it just seems like their evolution is so quick or our time um the way our time travels one yeah. second in our time could be you know yeah. 10 years or something in their time so or whatever yeah. it is so it's a very they, typical story of when like a mini universe isn't it really yeah so their 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 time constraints could be you know, one year could be like half a second. Yeah. So, or, or could be five years, could be half a second. Because it seemed to excel very quickly because yeah. they were, they started building, building, building. They got to nuclear yeah. and they did a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Uh, which which blew up on Topher Grace's face. 
yeah, and then they think the let's just close this and let's go order a pizza <laughs> um after eating a the pizza they open the freezer thinking, you know what what the hell's going to happen now um and they've got to the point where civilization is built like really futuristic stuff and it seems mm. like you know it, it's, it's all it, yeah and it seems to be evolving so quick that it does like some sort of energy beam or singularity or yeah. kind of like a a black hole or something it just all disappears yeah it seems like they, they humanity it was the mini humanity has, has become a singularity and um what would you say evolved um, enlightened yeah ultimately <laughs> yeah well yeah enlightened would be a good way of putting it yeah, um, and then word, think, but... they they completely disappear from the freezer so you know they think oh let's just unplug the fridge refrigerator yeah. we'll clean it tomorrow so while, while they're having breakfast they open the freezer now and they see that the the time has gone back to the well, say time has gone back. It's yeah. it's now prehistoric Cycle. time, and it's very primitive. And you see a T Rex T Rex running right. towards yeah. one of the primitive, and he starts to eat them. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of think of this as what they saw originally was the way the world looks like now, but really. Yeah would have happened millions of years ago maybe got to mm. the point where that current race got so advanced that they left this planet yeah. they left the planet and they are now elsewhere in the universe doing whatever mm. um, eventually this planet then had its ice age and had all of that and then life came, grew back again and it yeah. started from scratch and yeah. that's where we are and that's where the dinosaurs start and that's kind of like yeah. the very first we always think of dinosaurs okay. and yeah. all of that as the very beginning yeah. Well, if they if you watch the sh- the show, they kind of start it from they show a mi- uh, they show the mammoth, but when they actually open the freezer, they're so much further ahead. Yeah. So I think this is the re- we're currently in the reboot. <laughs> something's something's already happened, and they've already left the planet. Yeah. And they went away. So maybe what happens is after a while we destroy all of Earth's resources, and if at that stage the the human race is advanced enough, we leave this planet and go off elsewhere. This yeah. planet then gets reset, mm. and eventually life regrows back on it. Yeah, I saw it as just a cycle, and more addressing just the fact that when when the sort of nuclear bombs go off, that's us now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the state we're in. And yeah, and and I guess that's the thing I liked about the episode is the idea of hope that we can actually get past it and be able to have a. a the next level of civilization that isn't destroying itself and um yeah the singularity and becoming spirit beings flying around so yeah it's good hopeful in that respect the the cycle thing was a bit i mean i don't think it's it's not as easy to see the earth in those terms of the of the cycle of beginning again but i guess it would do because it seems slower the second time around yeah, well, you know we just seen one snippet though. So, because what we've seen so far, you know, when they've stood over the planet, the planet's mm. evolving constantly. Like, you know, they're in the revolution, yeah. and then it uh, became um, the next stage and the next stage. It was happening quite quick, but in the yeah. last second, where we see the planet, and maybe it's because the refrigerator is not plugged in anymore. Maybe. They showed mm. the dinosaur longer than they showed any other part. Yeah, previously. True. Yeah, I just saw that as a live action, you know, that sort of showing us something happening rather than it. It was trying to show us an event rather than the development. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a good point. I didn't really know, think about that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I I really like this one. I think may, mainly because Mary Elizabeth Winstead is in this one. Yeah, and, and Topher Grace. <laughs> well, I I did like it, but rewatchable. I didn't really want to rewatch it. This one's fresh. So I have, to, I have to give this a... I to, you're, you're calling it now, Fresh. I called it. You're calling it. Uh, I'm going to call it Rotten because I didn't really want to want, want, rewatch it. it. It could have been good, but I didn't really want to rewatch it. It's boring. It's, like it's, 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 it's okay, but once you've seen it once, you don't need it again. <laughs> you know what's going to happen. It's fine. You can skip forward to the end and go, oh, yeah, look, that's what happened. So, yeah, Rotten. <laughs> Only just Rotten. It is, it is really good. I like the hope. I like that side of it. But, I mean, they used live action people as well, which is cheating. They even animate the thing. They could have animated those two characters. No. I mean, if if you can get two good looking people in your film, have them. That's what I say. I they say didn't them. even sleep together. Why, why didn't she get naked? 
this, they this just is, moved this in. This is what film's all about. Exactly, they christened the place. They're no, a they couple. Don't. That's they've just they opened up. They've just opened up the freezer, and some crazy stuff is going on. Yeah, How are you going to have? First, first thing they do is have sex and pizza. No. They just ordered, they just ordered the pizza. What are they? Well, they ordered the pizza. Because... Really? No. <laughs> anyway, it's fresh for me. So then that brings us on to <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> the next episode, um, and this is this one's all for you. This okay. is what's the okay. story, my guy monkey. I would like to know first. the secret me. to war. The secret to war. Is this the one where they are fighting a war? <laughs> the title um, says war. Um, okay, so with I'm just going to guess. It's like, it's, red, it's like Russian. Army. Yeah, they're Russians. Yeah, that's the one. We, and they, we think it's Russian. And it looks like they're fighting a war. Um, at first, I assumed they were fighting a war against humans, as you do. It looked like... a uh, classic uh call of duty or something going on like it looked like a video game in that respect um it's well it's good animation still though um sort of on the realistic side um and then you find out the people that they're that they're on edge about the um they're about to fight are some sort of monster alien creature things um they make it through that situation, shoot them all. Um, then, uh, in case you didn't uh, notice, uh, I wasn't interested in rewatching this one. So, <laughs> um, but then they have a they they talk about the origin of the these creature things. Yep, and where they came from and stuff. Yeah, the bad guy wanted to uh, raise them. They're sort of demons. They they performed a ritual to summon them there. Yeah, and then they. The demons, I think, killed the guy that summoned them. Yes, so they turned now, on him. Yeah, they're just on the rampage. Yeah, um, and then the next thing we see is they've found a, a sort of nest, some some place where just huge amounts are going to come out of. Yeah, and it it collapses in on itself, and there's just loads of them. So they decide to bomb it. Try to bomb it. Um, they send off one guy on a horse or something. I think it's a horse. Um, to go and alert like the greater powers um, because they might not make it through this battle and they're just trying to contain the creatures and it, yeah, it's all action oriented so that's about all there is to it really um, they all die I think in the battle but then reinforcements come at the end and that's the end yeah so, so very well put that, there's a bit where you because th- this is as you said there's, there's a lot happening anyway uh, there's a guy stood behind like a rock and he puts yeah. a gun to his head and he shoot him, shoot himself, because he'd mm. rather get okay. shot dead than get killed by these things. Um, yeah. um, basically, I think it's Russia who were trying to win the tide of war, and then they come up with this idea of bringing up this um, um, this army of the dead or Hades or whatever they refer to it as, and they summon this thing. So, I think when he read the book, they had two choices: let's kind of keep this hush hush. Or do we tell someone because, you know, there's a big implication. And that's what mm. that guy who went off on the yeah. horse was to say, to, to this is them. their location, bomb it. And at the end, you see the bombs and you see them running away and you see it all explode and stuff. Yeah, and presumably a, a happy ending, but we don't really know. We don't so they, know might just, they, just, they might just survive it. But yeah, they could be more underground in those burrows yeah. uh, that we don't see and they could survive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, cre- they're creatures from... From the underworld, presumably, so not uh, above ground weapons might not actually really. They might kill them, but it doesn't this. stop more coming up. Yeah, maybe they just re- respawn and just keep going. Yeah, so even if they kill, um, uh, let's say a hundred of them, but there could be fifty more coming up through the through the undergrowth or wherever they come mm-hmm. from. Um, well, yeah. Kids. What do you think? I really like this one. I I thought. There's a sense more. This is almost like the way Dump could have gone. You go for a slightly more horror kind of theme initially because there's only one or there's only mm-hmm. one or two. And it feels a bit more kind of they're isolated. They're on their own. And it's more kind of uh, there's a there's a danger that they will definitely be killed. But then mm-hmm. as they survive the first kind of uh, attack and then they go down and they get into the tunnels and the rest of it and the yeah. whole hordes of them come out and you're thinking maybe one might survive maybe maybe and 
as the, the show goes on becomes apparent none of them will yeah. i really like that um this is the one tension, i did watch a second yeah. time i did watch a second time and yeah. this was all substance so a good yeah, story this was a good through line shooting call of duty I, fan. I mean there was a cook there's there a bit of shooting sure yeah there's a bit of killing yeah. and stuff but yeah we'll, we'll have to uh do the call of duty series at some point because you're gonna love that just pure action shooting Shit, all the time yeah uh, yeah i i enjoyed it uh for me this 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 mm. one this it's because of because of the way we do our ratings how often could you re-watch this i mean well that was my seen it, you can rate it however you want if you've seen it once you know what's going to happen yeah but it does have that i do like the tension building and the rest of it yeah, yeah i would say it's fresh i'm not gonna listen yeah. to you anymore uh <laughs> good you should, you should be <laughs> doing that the same way i do um, um i think yeah when i watched it the first time i remember now you remind me sort of the tense tenseness of the situations and and how how who's going to survive and who's sacrificing themselves you know that they're doomed all that stuff is good but because it was action i didn't really want to rewatch it so i gave it a 40 percent of run okay so, yeah but it was good yeah it's all right rotten good. <laughs> i really liked it rotten <laughs> run. um so the last episode uh, episode 18 depends um okay. obviously on your netflix yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to tell me what the story <laughs> name is, and shall I get into it, or you, you tell me the name, and then I'll tell you the name. <laughs> okay. Alternate histories. Alternate histories. Okay. Um, this one is called Alternate Histories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the story, my guy Brig? Oh, that's your okay. that's your version. <laughs> that you is like my version. Know? <laughs> okay, so um, I can sum this up in a couple of minutes. Right, this is nice and easy. It seems like there's some sort of um, out, a simulator or app, and in the yeah. app you could say "what ifs" or what kind if, of show yeah. me an alternative timeline. So, what would happen if? And he chose um, what happens if Adolf Hitler died yeah. as a child, this is and like the a potential demo, consequences yeah. of what would happen if he died literally walking out the front door. If he yeah. died a bit later on during that day, if he died with various different method, all the yeah. me- methods, um, and what it's would that fun. repercussions be to the uh, to the future? <laughs> I, I really liked it. So it's a fun episode. It's a short, yeah. fun episode showing it all, it's just just a wacky kind of timeline where okay, so he's he's a little kid comes down the stairs, he gets run over by the bus or some uh, that car or lorry or whatever it was. Okay, so he's uh. dead. This is what happens, and then he misses that and then he goes and crosses the road then he dies and then and then what happened next and then what happens if he didn't die there and he moved on to the next yeah. thing and it's, stuff and like, it's I, thing, I really liked it slowly it becomes more and more ridiculous and yes. the things not only the, the the things that happen become like they straight away the things that happen start off slightly ridiculous hmm. um but the way that he gets killed it also is all tied into them and they get more ridiculous so it starts off um he shouts at a little girl and gets beaten to death. That's actually how I start the That's first one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I can't remember what the consequences were of that. Um, then the next one was he was a horse and carriage. He gets, and then the consequences that um, a different country um, bans horses, I think, uh, or restricts horse carriage, horse and carriage, and develops the auto car first, and they become a superpower. Yes, um, that's right. But then the third one, is it the third one he gets, uh, is that the one where he gets um, caught in jello? Is that the one? Jelly, as we call it here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Fourth one, he's, he's, a, he's um, attracted by a group of females who have an orgy, which is, you know, a great tie-in with this whole series uh, to the overlying theme um and that that outcome is just uh crazy and abstract it's just like they turn out to be super powerful beings um and yeah and then the final 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 outcome is that the humanity destroys itself i think and yes then does, yeah then squids evolve no first of all some other creature evolves and they go extinct and destroy themselves and then the um, squid evolved to millions of years later, and they and 
each time it shows who lands on the moon first on each of these yes, scenarios. Yes, it does, yeah, yeah. And then in the final one, it's a squid on the moon, which it just ties together brilliantly. Yeah. It's a really funny episode. It's really good, really fun. It's good to kind of just say to someone, look, make an episode almost like a what-if example. And they took yeah. Adolf Hitler, and then the, the very end of the simulation, it's like, what happens if Lincoln shot first? And it's, yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's really funny. I really yeah. like this one. This is, this is fresh for me. Absolutely. 95% fresh for me, this one. Yeah, funny. So basically, I was reading this thing on uh, Netflix. It does say in um, March okay. this year, they yeah. did reveal that they were experimenting with a new approach that included different order of episodes for different users. So mm. it, it is, it, they have confirmed that that's what they've done. So it may okay. be that me and you watch this, but your orders are very different to the yep. ordering which I, I watched see. them. That's why you uh, read it from that separate order. Yes. So for yeah. me, the whole show as a whole is fresh. There are some rotten episodes in there, but overall, it's a great idea. Mm. Um, okay. And it's fun. Yeah. Some of for them how are really short fun. they are. For how short they yeah. are, you can't really call any of them rotten in the whole scheme of things. If you watch them from Help beginning to end, or you watch maybe three or four at once because they're so short, you're going to have some that are great. They're the fresh ones. You're going to have some that aren't really rotten. They're just less interesting. Yeah. I think so. They're just ones that, yeah. So I don't think you can really go wrong with this series. Definitely worth a watch. Definitely, and, if you've not seen it by now. And especially if you like video games or animation, and you're interested in how that, how they use that different animation and style. Which I think we, I think we're interested in that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? I don't know. I've always I, been I, interested. Yeah. Like, I'll, I like that Borderlands, uh, the way the Borderlands, Borderlands one opened up, because um, that was very different kind of cartoony feel. And then you get stuff like um, Team Fortress, which can, is what Fortnite is like. Um, and I then you have games of, like Half-Life and one, stuff. There's one we haven't talked about. Is there one more still? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't, because my list is all unordered, so I haven't been able to follow it but i remember there's one already oh of course um, there is there's the the hijacking one the yeah car the hijacking because that's kind of borderlands looking which yes reminds... it is yeah yeah that's right and, that, and that's actually very much like borderlands as well because they're doing so, a, so off a, the bat without thing. actually describing this because this is quite an action-packed yeah. fast and furious steal something kind of yeah episode yeah fresh or rotten fresh or rotten rotten for me I thought action. you'd say that, right? This is this it's is a really action. good episode, which just like showcased these people trying to steal something, and it turned out that the thing that they're stealing from was actually able to fend itself off against yeah. most of them, That's most true. of these attacks, and actually kill them. So if if Vin Diesel, yeah. if Vin Diesel was coming to steal whatever's on yeah. the, the 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 convoy, the most of his crew would be killed. Mm. I like that. But then I think it turns out that they they just used uh, those bodies and they were elsewhere yeah. the whole time or something. That's what I didn't like about the episode as well. Like the reveal was just like, oh, it's just like a video game. We're all fine, but we didn't really care whether they died or not. I, I, I didn't care whether they survived or not. Like I would have yes. liked it to twist the other way. The convoy survives yeah. by killing them all. Yeah, why not have have someone else win for once? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let the, let the good guys win. <laughs> win. Let Vin Diesel win. Vin Diesel's the bad guy. We went through this last time. <laughs> no, he's the good guy. He's, he's, he's the worst. He's the worst bad guy. Okay, so in this one, himself. did you actually think that the um, the our protagonists were the bad guys because they were doing the hijacking? Because I can't remember I, what they were really doing it for. I can't remember what they were doing it for because the camera and everything follows them, and you. And there's yeah. a tiny bit of character development of them. You know, you've got the, bant the, the banter between the people or whatever. Yeah. And they're working as a team. Exactly. You're, led to, you're led to believe they're the crew. But they're the exactly. people you should be following as the good people. Exactly. And that's when the message in life. Like, stealing... whoever gets the banter is the one that's the good guy. But, but they're, they're not stealing necessarily something. the good guy, are they? They're the bad it's, guy. Exactly. It's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a grey area. But if... if uh... If if a Hovis truck is driving down, do you steal the whole truck of Hovis so you can eat bread by yourself? Eat bread. Which is what Vin Diesel would do. 
but he won't steal the truck and then feed all the poor people in um, Brazil or wherever they're stealing yeah. from, right? He doesn't do that. So he, he's, mm. he, and then, you know, if they are no longer um, filled with bread, but now they're filled with cocaine and Vin Diesel steals the cocaine yeah, and he sells it and makes money because that's what he eats and his family eats. Yeah. Um, does it mean because he stole cocaine, it's different? Well, that guy had to, or that woman had to make the cocaine themselves. They're paying the driver to transport the cocaine from here to there. So, you know, it's a business expense. But and he's now still, he's, he's stealing the cocaine to sell so that he can eat the bread. That he's going to buy <laughs> which, he, which he can steal himself as well. If you can steal DVDs, you can steal bread. Yeah, well, the thing is, you'd have to steal a lot more bread if you want to eat a lot more. Whereas you can buy like loads and loads of bread with, with the profits from a truck of cocaine. But what you've, you've, what you've done is you've stopped someone else from making that profit. So you've stolen yeah, from somewhere else's business empire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that makes, you, that makes you worse than them. It's a very grey area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, this episode, I, I like the whole action aspect of it because it's kind of yeah. a non-stop. You, you get kind it's of like straight into it and, and they're doing this heist thing. But then it's just, it's the end reveal I didn't like. I wouldn't have minded if he jumped off the the final character yeah. jumps off and he or she is the last person and the crew yeah. has been killed and the stakes are high yeah then you feel like there was there was something to because because you watch it a second time and you'd be like well it doesn't matter if he dies now it doesn't matter if that character dies but if they all died and you and it realized that that information that he stole from them was going to set you know solve yeah. world hunger or something was going to help the yogurts in mm. the thing that they were working on then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm down with this these guys, and I feel for the guys who died. But yeah, yeah, I didn't. It's a um, fresh episode, though. <laughs> fresh episode, <laughs> rotten, <laughs> definitely rotten. It was, it was, it was very much just Borderlands. Like it, it had, is Borderlands. Yeah, yeah, different characters with different. It uh, felt like that as well, didn't it? Like Mordecai was there. It yeah, felt exactly like it was like Roland that. was there or uh, Brick. Um, yeah. It, it felt like my uh, uh, the yeah. phase, and then the reveal is just like it's just a video game. We're just, yeah, we're, we're just playing a game. We're just avatars in a video game. That's what we are. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah okay. So that's our uh, that's our whole review of Love, Death, Robots. Uh, tell us what you think, mm-hmm. uh, and then yeah, if you agree or disagree with monkeys, rottens. Or yeah. fresh, tell us what you think. Um, do we have segments for review? we still have our segments, yeah. Do you want to kick off? What is the first segment? Um, re- uh, quick reviews, mini reviews, yeah. Uh, things we've seen, things we've played. Have you got anything to, to talk about? Um, so I was gonna go watch Ho- Hobson and Shaw, yeah, because 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 Lion King left such a bitter taste in my mouth, I avoided uh, the cinema for a week. Oh, uh, nice. so, so I'm gonna watch it next week. Okay. I mean, if you want to listen to our review of Lion King, well, it's on last week's episode. Um, so it's there somewhere. I, I, I just uh, I watched another episode of The Boys. I think I'm now five in. Got three mm. to go. Um, oh. Still loving it. It's really good. So once once it's complete, I'll kind of do like a mini kind of a full kind of like talk about how I enjoyed it or what I didn't like. Yeah. Um, and then give it the fresh or rotten thing. Cool. Um, and as the English Barclays Premier League season has started, I've been watching the football, um, and I watched England play Australia in the Ashes. So it's mm. slightly distracted for five days. If anyone knows cricket, it takes mm. five days to play. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, India v Pakistan is it, or what's going it's, on? It's the Ashes. It's England versus Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. it's happening here in the UK as well. <laughs> Or oh, cricket time, then I'll call it that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that that's it, really. They're they're the things. Um, that's cool. Yeah. That's things. What about yourself? Um, well, uh, nothing really new. I I rewatched Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah. I'm still I'm still going through my my uh, Tarantino, ready for the upcoming movie. Yeah. Um, again, See, that's another three hour epic, does it? Yeah. Same does as you it asked me. Yeah, it yeah. still does. Like every time I think about the movie, I think, "Oh, it's too long. I don't really want to rewatch it." Yeah. But you just get engaged by all the conversations. I do because I like conversations. You like action, so you, you might. You didn't start... like Hateful Eight, though. You said you didn't like it second watch. No, I I did like it. Yeah, 
I enjoy the conversations watching them all. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I've you... definitely enjoyed Django more than I'd enjoy this. Django was just non-stop action. And um, then I've got um, two hours, maybe two and a half hours into the film, and then I'll see Jamie Foxx. So that, <laughs> that'll keep me going. Keeps, keeps you going, <laughs> just knowing that that's coming up. It's exactly at some point, at any point. Keeps bums in seats. Naked exactly. bums. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else? Yeah. Uh, I played. I've been playing a game on the Vita called uh, Monster Mon Piece, okay. which is a bit of a card. It's like a card game with a board, yeah. um, um, with a, a story tied to it. So, um, yeah, it's like a, a another Japanese, slightly weird one where it uses the Vita controls, the touch screen, um, in a slightly lewd way, just to for for giggles, really. Um, but yeah, it's quite. It's been quite interesting it slowly builds up the card game um in the complexity of the card game uh but i was a bit disappointed that um you, your first battle that you play you're sort of on you've each got three lives you and your opponent but then a lot of the battles after that the opponent only has one life and you have three which makes it a bit easier so i'm while i'm trying to um like um become an expert at the game there's not really much point because i can it, it they die really easily and i win too easily so it's starting to pick up a bit better because the enemies are starting to have higher things but yeah it's just taking a while to get going i think um and like any of these games like the story keeps going a little bit uh the characters aren't as engaging as some weird games that i play with so yeah that's about it for that um coming up things coming up still waiting yeah, for tarantino Hopefully this weekend we'll do the Tarantino watch. So yeah, next week will be a Tarantino episode. Uh, hopefully, possibly. Yeah. I mean, depends what day we do it. But fourteenth is coming out, isn't it? So yes, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's the Wednesday. Oh, is it? I thought it's this yeah, weekend. I think it's oh. the Wednesday. So if, unless we do the episode a couple of days later, which is possible, and we manage to get into the first. <laughs> Literally the first, yeah, the first showing. So yeah, uh, if you get to see it and we, yeah, if we both get to see it, we'll talk about it next week. Otherwise, definitely week after. Or we the week after, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, I'm going to try and watch Hobbs and Shaw this week. Um, yeah. Cu- currently sitting at 90% fresh from audience um, response. So wow. the audiences seem to love it. I love it. Yeah, I've, I've heard it's got good, uh, obviously, comedy and action, basically, isn't it? That's all it is. <laughs> yes, that's all it is. Yeah, looking forward to that too. Um, in the video game world, they've announced uh, Shenmue 3 to come out in November now. I think it was supposed to come out in August, but it's been in development for about five years. It keeps getting delays. Yeah. So that's just that's just still news ongoing, which is wait, I'm waiting for it. Uh, I backed the Kickstarter five years ago, so I've got a copy inbound when it, they finally finish it. <laughs> Might be uh, PlayStation I, 5 by then. Yeah, well, I hope not. I put it for PlayStation 4. I'm supposed to be getting a copy. <laughs> I've been waiting for five years for it now. I paid for it five years ago in terms of the Kickstarter. So, yeah. Okay, so that that's all of our things. So yeah. how can they contact us, Monkey? Uh, please go ahead and tell us. Uh, Mike, <laughs> reviews at Twitter. Mike, yes. reviews. Um, Instagram, yes, you've got email addresses, yes, Mike. I refuse. You did it, <laughs> you got one yeah. out of the bag. Yes, um, we'll have all the contact details in the description below. Description below, <laughs> yes, excellent, brilliant. Thanks, guys. Bye, thank you for joining us, and see you soon.